Hey, I'm Nashi. I'm Rizlar. And I'm Frosty. Welcome back to the Value Pack. Hold on, I have to gear, I have to gear check Nash right now. Alright, that is some bull jab. Dude, he CC'd me out of dance. What's happening? Oh, Rizlar! People look at you like you're crazy, and they refuse to admit <laughs> that it's pay to win, and just scream that it's pay to convenience! It's pay to convenience! Big money, big money, big money, big, big money! money. And welcome everybody to another episode of the Value Pack. First things first, Nayashi isn't here right now. Uh, he's busy doing uh, IRL stuff. Uh, hopefully he can join later, but we don't know if he's going to be able to. Um, so yeah, no Maywa today. Maybe he will be joining us later, but uh, that's okay because we're not going to be talking about Maywa today. Today we're going to be talking about Draconia Awakening. The preview has been out for a couple days now. Frosty got access to it. Uh, and so we're gonna just going to be talking about it, basically. Talking about what we see. Uh, Frosty got jebated by Prolibus. <laughs> they did, in fact, lie. Uh, or they didn't lie. They didn't follow the pattern that they have always followed. Um, which I'm sure some people are going to be upset about. But we'll jump into that in just a second. First, got to thank our lovely, lovely patrons. Garmoth.com. Hawaiian laggy skills melt on your mouth. Minaria, no name, and Wavesy. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show, as well as all of our individual Twitch subscribers, which you can find in the description down below. Frosty, you got lied to. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel good about it. Perlibus broke your trust. You said you said with such confidence every single grab that an, a class has had, they have put it in the trailer, which yeah. means this class does not have a grab so i was certain. thinking all the way back to the striker trailer where they showed the drag remember yeah 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 and people were like freaking out yeah it was it looked cool and then that that grab actually was kind of ass for a long time and now <laughs> now it's good <laughs> it was awful <clears throat> all right they're saying oh, i gotta turn no. you up it sucks so just a heads up uh for people joining in my voice sounds different i am uh I'm just gonna, I guess, sick. I guess I'm just sick. I don't even know how else. I don't know if I actually have a cold or anything, but my sinuses are really fucked up from my trip and I lost my voice. So there's that. So I sound weird and I'm gonna have to pause and drink water like 50 million times. <laughs> Rough, brother. Mm hmm. Yeah, I wasn't really around people. So on my trip, for the record, sorry, I got to keep clearing my throat. Um, I actually wasn't really around people. I was just out in nature. So I went with like uh, my sister, uh, Miss Frosty, and then my sister's boyfriend. And we went up to Oregon just to, we visited Crater Lake, Klamath Falls. We went to like the, one of these safari things out there. We just kind of were by ourselves. And we weren't really with people for most of it, except for when we ate food. Um then we kind of kept to ourselves. So I don't know. I, I guess it's possible I have COVID. I don't have any other symptoms except my nose is, I, I feel like my allergies are killing me. Did you take a test? No, I just got home. I actually just got home last night, which is why I haven't actually gotten to play Drac until literally this morning. It was my first time actually touching it, even though everyone's been on it for a couple days now. So there is, uh, there's that. But anyway... I'm home, I'm excited. And uh, yeah, so they didn't show the grab in the trailer, but it does in fact have a grab. Well, I'm just gonna put some makeshift skill out on so I could try out PVE um, while we're grinding. But while, now, I, while I... I put these add-ons, I kind of want to get your initial impressions. Have you played it? Do you have any friends that have played it? And how much have you Yeah, seen? so that's what I was about to say is yeah. I did not get access because I didn't sign up for it because I don't do that sort of thing because I'm lazy. Uh, however, I have been watching a lot of different uh, people play it, including my guild leader who managed to get access. And so uh, she was nice enough to uh, stream, uh, like testing various things, uh to the rest of the guild as well as uh, I got to ask her a bunch of different questions about the kit and so I got uh, a little bit of information about it even though I haven't played it myself um so as far as uh, my thoughts on it I think it looks really fun 
I think it looks cool. Um, I still am not positive how strong it's going to be. Hmm. Uh, it seems like... So from what I've seen and from what I've heard, first of all, the PvE apparently is really, really good. The um, PvE? That's interesting you say that. We'll have that's to what that I've heard. I don't okay. know about that, but I've heard that it's really good. Um, it's better than Succession, and it's really good. It's not like top tier or anything. It's not like best in the game, but it's good. That's what I've heard. Don't know if that's true or not. I haven't played it myself. As far as PvP goes, it seems like it is fairly protected, um, but I think I... I don't know. The skills... A lot of the skills seem, like, pretty slow. Um, there's a couple abilities that seem to be really, really high damage. Like, I think the ability where she puts both spears in the ground is, like, really, really high damage for some bizarre reason. Like, way higher damage than any other ability in the kit. Um, and she also seems to be squishy. I've heard people say that she, like, for some reason seems a lot squishier. Even with, like, hard cap gear, it feels like she's squishier than, like, other classes that you would play on Global Labs with hard cap gear. So, keep in mind, all of this is here, see? I haven't played it myself. I've just been watching people play it and gathering, like, thoughts from various individuals. Yeah. Um. Alright, so, in terms of the PvE thing, I haven't gotten a kill mobs, but I've watched a bunch of videos of people trying it out. I actually don't think it's good. Maybe it's average, maybe. And again, like it's also still early, so it might end up being really, really good once it's out and people get used to it. Because this the kit is pretty big, but it seems only okay. I don't know. Uh, I was comparing it to Hash. I was watching someone was grinding with three ten triple pen black star, and they put up a video of them at Gyphon. So I, I kind of like compared how long it takes to kill a pack for them and how long it takes my hash to kill a pack, and like the hash is significantly faster on awaken hash anyway mm. uh so I don't, I don't know what that means exactly yet and i don't know what their crystals were and i don't know if their combo is optimized because the whole thing is new so it, it seems okay it definitely seems better than suck but i don't know if it seems good i think what is blowing everyone's mind is the sf skill and in, in um awakening this one when god i don't even I gotta get used to the stances. So in Dragon Blood stance, which is like the blue stance, Sundering Roar I know hits super hard in PV, but it's a 20 second cooldown, so you don't really have it up that much. That's the one with like 30 hits or something, right? Yeah, that's the Dragon Breath one, yeah. It has an insane amount of hits, and the animation is ridiculously cool. Yeah, so apparently uh, I've heard people say that if you put a uh, health per hit modifier on that, it can heal you like half of your HP pool, if not more. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten to test anything. It's so weird. It's so like, dude, I, I'm like overwhelmed trying to even think about putting skill add-ons because there's just so much going on here. Right. Hold on, let me get a let me see if I can get a skill add-on screenshot from the chat. Um I, I want to ask you about the style though, like now that you've seen more of it, like the, the idea, so it has two stances as dragon, <clears throat> dragon blood and then hex blood. And when you swap between them, it, it's pretty easy. So you can use shifty. There's the skill called legacy in their kit. It's a four second cooldown essentially swaps you between the two at will almost like, I mean, basically like a C swap. C swap, yeah. Um, you can also use spacebar after abilities to automatically swap you as well. And then some of the abilities also um some of the abilities also automatically swap you over. So for example, forward E. Hold on, let me let me turn off my fan. It's squeaking all of a sudden. <laughs> no squeaky fans allowed. We just had to give it a little shake. Um but yeah, so forward E, which is like her dash, kind of, it's a six second tectonic slam in uh, hex blade or hex blood. <laughs> uh, it, it dashes you forward and does like a stab attack. This one, no matter which stance you're in, will bring you into the hex blood stance. And then 
I don't know which one. Maybe I think Shift Q is the one that will automatically bring you back into Dragon Blood stance. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. Plus, plus spacebar, and, and when you use spacebar, it's smooth. Like it feels just like you would C swap in a combo, you know, like on other classes. Right, I, and they so it, it, really feel like just so C the stance switching is a de facto swapping from awakening to pre awakening yeah i mean that's how it's similar. designed to function yeah it, i get the vibe that they don't want you using pre awakened that much and the other thing that gives me that vibe is outside of the rebombs there is no ability in the kit that i've been able to find that brings you to pre awakening you can't use any of the stuff from hotbar uh like all the pre awakening there's a ton of pre awakening skills you can put on your hotbar but they don't do anything unless you're in pre-awakening. Right. So you basically have to either uh, actually C-swap or uh, use one of their bombs to get into the, to the pre-awakening. Um, that's the only way. So it, it does feel like their whole thing is like, no, this is most of your kit. The pre-awakening seems like you're gonna use it just for healing, like running away and then healing, I guess, and, and the PA. Maybe. Right. But it feels more like, uh, I, I guess, at least the way I picture it in my mind, if you're in Node War or in RBF, it would be you'd run away and then use one of the heals kind of the way you see Zerkers do all the time when they run away and start healing. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, it's not like an in combat thing because you're probably still going to die. Yeah. Especially if you get grabbed. Now, you could use the PA. I guess in combat, like in their face, but the PA is a little bit worse than the prime version. It has a longer cooldown. It only reduces damage by 30% instead of uh, 50%. And the drain on it is less, but it still will heal you and gives you damage reduction. So it's still really and strong. Because, because you can't like go directly into it. That means you do have to use a rebomb or a actual C swap first before you can use the PA. Yeah, you got to use something first. So that that's kind of nice. Um Awakening has a grab. Now, the grab is point blank. Uh you have to be in their face to do the grab and you can cancel the last hit. The last hit does seem like it has decent damage, but the pro like so I was just talking with Reezy about it and he was saying he cancels the last hit because it has a down smash and can mess up your combos or put your enemy too far away. So he actually doesn't use the last hit. Uh but <clears throat> it does have a grab. And I was curious once you saw that it had a grab, what was like Were you mad? Were you like, I knew it? Were you Are you okay with it having a grab? What was your feeling on uh, having a grab? I don't know. Kind of disappointed. Um, I don't know. I, they until they really like find the proper way to balance grabs. I, I don't know if we should be adding more of them, honestly. Um, but I understand that like fun comes first, right? You're trying to design something that's fun, but that's just kind of my feelings on it. Um, I don't know how long the cooldown is. Fifteen uh, seconds. So it's like a standard, your standard grab. Yeah. So it doesn't seem it doesn't seem overly powerful. It's not a ranged grab. It's not an AOE grab like Lawn. Um, that being said, I know that like for a lot of people, they see that it has a grab and they're kind of like, oh, great, like another another one. And it's like I totally get that. As as someone who's played a lot of Sucks Age, I totally get that feeling of like, oh fuck, another goddamn grab, of course. But I mean the bright side is that it doesn't have SA block, um, which is honestly kind of surprising to me. I kinda expect as soon as I saw it had a grab, I was like, okay, well it also has SA block then. Um, but it actually doesn't. It's just forward guard, so that's gonna make the fight uh a little bit easier. And it definitely, I think, like tempers those feelings of like, oh god damn it, like here we go again. Yeah, it, it helps kind of like tone that down a little bit because it's like it's not going to be a Valkyrie or a warrior just sitting in fucking SA block and going for the free grab on the the Suck Sage or the Maywa or like whatever, you know? Yeah. 
Real quick, we so, have, this is a quick aside off topic because it was a debate we were having before we started the show. Um, someone is asking your opinion on mouse movement on Zerker 1v1 if you think that it impacts 1v1 or not. Like how and how impactful is it in 1v1? For example, if you couldn't mouse move on Zerker, would it be less strong in 1v1 or do you think it doesn't matter that much in 1v1? No, it would be less strong. You mouse move... Well, okay... So for succession, your mouse movement is like relatively minimal. Um, still very useful. You're gonna mouse move your lava piercer. Uh, you can mouse move your predatory hunt to like get more damage down. So still very very useful. But on awakening, mouse movement is like very key to having yeah. like strength in one v one. You have to mouse move your moving shot to make it like an actually decent ability uh you mouse move your giant leap so that you can use the backwards version to go forwards which is the better version because the forward version kind of sucks dick so you have to basically you backwards giant leap and then mouse move to move yourself forward essentially if that makes sense um which are both like very very key things to do as well as still using mouse movement for lava piercer for various reasons um yeah it's just very very key so without if you just removed mouse movement from the game it would be extremely detrimental to awakening zerker's 1v1 potential and it would really hurt uh successions 1v1 potential yeah all right random aside the discussion originally came up because it was like well how insane would this dragonflight thing be if you could mouse move or it really any of her movement, if you can mouse move. And I, I highly doubt you can, because they've like, I don't know, every every spec. They've been moving away one, from being able to mouse move. Yeah, they just make it so. It's I think not it's their. On a lot I think it's their solution, because they wanted to remove mouse movement, and then everyone basically went, "Yo, what the fuck." And so they kind of shied away from it. And I think that this is their solution: is instead of just removing it outright, they're just gonna stop allowing new classes to do it, essentially. Yeah, and then whatever classes use mouse movement currently of the old classes is just kind of like baked into the cake sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, even in a lot of suck kits, they made it so some stuff can't be mouse moved. Yeah, hundred percent. No, they've definitely been moving away from the ability to mouse move your your shit. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Yeah, if anyone says that Zerker doesn't need mouse movement in 1v1, especially Awakening, they're not correct. They're in, they're incorrect. They're wrong. They're not yeah. a Zerker who 1v1s <laughs> a lot. Yeah, my, my thing on it was just like, it, it's almost, from an outside Zerker perspective, from the ones I'm fighting, the ones that mouse move are the ones that can fight me 1v1, and the ones that don't literally can't. <laughs> so it's like uh yeah i don't know anyway so back to drag all right so dude I, i'm still blown away by this two the two kit system here yeah it's it, very interesting it is it, it's really really unique and a lot of the abilities seem pretty useful it's not like it doesn't seem like there's too much like crap in the kit i know there's every kit has one or two skills that just you're like yep not using that Maybe for niche situations, but there's like crap that you don't use. But this feels like most of the stuff is pretty good. And swapping between the two is kind of cool and another thing to keep track of. And it doesn't have like the ion meter you're trying to keep up. So it's more like fun. Like the gimmick of the class is fun rather than tedious. Yeah. If that makes sense. Because uh, I think you, like me, were not a fan of the whole ion gauge thing. I don't like it at all. I, I don't like yeah. filling up a bar to be able to use stuff. Unless it's like, feels really fluid and the bar filling up is natural. But that yep. one just no, doesn't No, I agree feel like 100%. It. Um, yeah, and then that feeling... That's why like I'm also not really a big fan of uh, Awaken Nova. Because it, it yeah. feels like whenever you're in Excel, it's like, okay, so this is how the class should play. And then when you're not in Excel, you're like, okay, well, it's time to just wait till Excel comes up again, essentially. I don't know. I don't like it. Yeah. 
That that's exactly like with Excel. You know what it is? It's Q buff all over again. That's why I don't like it. It's Q buff all fucking over again. If you have Q buff up, then you're like, okay, I feel strong, I feel good, I'm having fun, and then you don't have Q buff up, and you're like, all right, how long until Q buff is back up? That's why I hate it. It's it's old Q buff. I hate it. I don't like it. Yeah. No, because it, what you know what ends up happening is you feel like you're having fun in Excel, and then when you come out of it, it feels not fun. That, that's like the effect. The intended effect is to be like, oh, this feels normal, this feels normal, here's a power spike, this feels awesome, and then it's normal. But what ends up actually happening is feeling like, oh, this feels good, this feels good, this feels bad, this feels bad. When you swap between the two. I don't know. Yeah. At least that's how it felt for no, me. No, 100%. So even in PvE, you're just like, ugh, God, wish I was in Excel. Um, Alright, I'm just gonna put random ass bullshit so I can do this. I don't even care. I don't care that much. Uh, Alright, so visually, how do you feel about the skills and the style of the class visually from uh, purely oh, I love it. aesthetic? I mean, we kind of, I mean, the trailer showed off a good bit of the visuals, right? So we kind of already knew what that was, but, um, I, I really enjoy it. I like the, uh, you know, the, the wind is a little bit boring and the, the fire is like been done a million times before, but I think that the combination is interesting and the, the dragon effects as well, right? Yeah. The, the dragon wings on certain moves that come out the uh the dragon head on the one move that comes out that type of stuff is like oh shit this is it <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so like without the dragon stuff it's like fine it's it's cool um but then you add in the dragon stuff and it's like oh shit all right here we go now we're talking <laughs> this is this is top tier shit right here um may not be water effects but it's good shit. It's not water effects. That is true. That's a huge downside for me. <laughs> no, but it, it's cool. The effects are actually really, really cool. Um, I, I, dude, it, the one dragon wing too looks cool. Have you seen the block? Just the normal Q block, the animation. Yeah. God, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. sick, dude. I was not expecting that. I yeah. thought for sure it was gonna be like you put the the dragon fang in the dirt and like brace yourself against it or something like that. Yeah. But instead it's just like fucking Chad goddamn almost like a JoJo character would, I would expect, honestly. <laughs> just like stand there, don't give a shit. Yeah. It's really cool. Um Yeah, and it's not an essay key block. Uh, although it looked like they were gonna do that, dude. With how it looks, too. Aesthetically speaking, it could be an SAQ block. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Like it could be more powerful, but you do you get your twenty DP from it for twenty seconds, just like in pre awakening. That's why I'm curious why people said it seemed squishy. I, the thing is hard to tell if it's squishy or not squishy, mostly because you're just against a bunch of other Drax. Yeah, so, okay, the comment that I received that it was squishy was in regards to, uh, at Gyphon. Mm -hmm. The person that was telling me this said that they were dying faster at Gyphon with hard cap gear than they do with their normal gear on live on the class that they normally grind on, which, if I remember correctly, was Guardian. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense to me, though, just because you probably... You're getting hit by everything and you're not doing a smooth like all right so for example when i first start learning gyphon on hash like i'm just like dude i am taking so much damage but then once i get used to it i'm almost never hit because i reposition properly in my combo efficient you know in an efficient time where i know the mob's gonna be hitting so sure yeah so at least to me it seems like it, it shouldn't be that big a deal um what do you think about the bleed thing? So it has its right spear does like fire stuff. I guess I can't for lack of a better term. And then its left spear is kind of the dragon slice thing. And right. the fire one will add a burn. 50 burn damage every 3 seconds for 9 seconds. And then the other one adds pain damage. 50 every 3 seconds for 9 seconds. So you could stack a couple bleeds. As well as like a, an add-on. Yeah. 
Um, so mixed feelings about it. I for quite some time now we've been saying that making a dot class would be cool, mm-hmm. but that doesn't seem like that's what this is. This seems like another suck ninja where it has its identity and then on top of that it bleeds you a bunch. Yeah. So, I have mixed emotions about it cuz it's like oh cool, but also like I I kind of wish that they would just make a class that just goes all in in that direction. Like we've talked about in the past with like doing like a necromancer or something like that, right? Yeah. That would be more interesting to me. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, it's it's fine, whatever. I like it. I think it's cool. It's fun. It's a it's a cool idea. I don't know how impactful it really is because it's only like a hundred pain damage every three seconds. But I do think with an add on, it adds up. So it's kind of nice. Might be able to steal some kills. Um. I I made this joke. I'm curious what, how you. I wish Nayashi was here too for like the one v one stuff. But I, I'm starting with large scale. Mm-hmm. From what you've seen, can you see it being good in large scale? Like obviously it has an engage. It has decent protection. Some of the AOEs are really big. Some aren't as big. Like, do you see it being a powerhouse in large scale? Like node wars, large DVGs, and siege. Uh. I don't know. Define powerhouse. I, I think it'll do <laughs> I fine. Um, I think it'll be okay. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be amazing. I, I don't think it's going to dethrone uh, Succession Draconia in large scale. I think Succession Draconia is still going to be better. Um, but I think it'll be okay. Yeah, that was Its ability opinion. to engage from light years away is really interesting. I'm sure you've seen the clips of people flying into Calfion Castle from the from the cliff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fly, the engage is nutty. The engage is actually really, really strong, especially when you like tie it with the shift Q skill, which is like the the leap thing. Hmm. Or even like forward E. So a, a lot of the, I guess everyone's taking tectonic slam, which is like a forward dash float. Um, they're taking that core skill. It's a six second cooldown, but when you use that after the dragon flight, it's like, it's pretty, pretty fat. Like it's going to be hard to avoid someone using that engage on you. Uh, from like literally from forever away. It also yeah. prevents you from out taking of render fall range. damage. Well out of render range. Yeah. Well out of render range. It also protects you from fall damage, but for only two seconds. So I do still see a lot of these clips where people jump off clips, end up dying. And they die. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's weird that it's... Let me see if it refreshes as I'm using it. Hold on. No, I don't even know how to get it to give you the fall damage thing. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't show the buff on your bar. Or maybe I'm just misremembering. No, it says immune to fall damage for two seconds when using the skill, but it doesn't show any buff on my bar. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't show up for some reason. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Because I'm curious if it refreshes as you're going or if it ends. Like, if it's just two seconds right off the beginning and then it's over. Right. So if you're flying for longer than two seconds and then you drop a good ways, you can still die. Yeah, I feel like the whole flying animation is two seconds. So I don't know, <laughs> like, I feel like it's over before the skill's over. I think. That's how it looks. Uh, yeah, I, my, I made the joke, like, it's going to be really interesting to see a bunch of awakened Drax dive into a ball and get one shot by Suck Drax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just get obliterated by Brimble. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's not going to dethrone Succession Draconia. I don't think it's going to be stronger than Succession Berserker. I don't think it's going to be more useful than like Succession Wizard or Awakened Valk. Um, but I think it's going to be like upper mid tier, honestly. Yeah. I can see it being upper mid tier for large scale. It's going to be probably going to be one of the better uh, melee classes for large scale. Not the top, but one of the better ones. Dude, it's skills. This is gonna be this class is gonna be fun to grind on. I, I honestly think 
I don't know if it's going to be great or not. Like when SF, dude, it's crazy. When SF is off cooldown, you do so much damage. And then when it's not, I have no idea what to do. I just feel like I'm just spamming buttons. So SF is the dragon breath one. It, it's also weird. I really wonder what happened. Like how much actually changed. So in, did you see the BDO codex? Like skills before people were playing it? Uh, people linked them to me, and so I saw like a couple different skills, but I didn't really like go and look into it because I knew that the release was coming out, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna wait for that then." Yeah, um, it was really interesting because the color scheme was backwards. The dragon blood stuff was all blue or all all red, and then the hex blood stuff was blue, and they had changed. This legacy skill apparently was part of the e-buff originally. At least the way it looked. Mm. It was like kind of part of the e-buff and it had a passive effect. I wonder if Codex even changed it. Maybe it's still there so I could use it as a reference. Um. Oh yeah, they haven't. I don't think they've changed it yet. All right, so let me see how they had it on here. Yeah, okay, so so they showed the e-buff as supposedly uh it would so it would give you 30% crit, 15% critical hit damage, 20% move speed. This was what came out to Global Labs. And then it had like a, a passive where I guess swapping to hex blood would give you super armor for three seconds, and swapping to dragon blood would recover five percent of your hit points while your e-buff is up. Mm. Which would be fucking insane, by the way. Yeah. But then they removed Especially that. because it seems like you can switch quite a bit. Yeah, you could swap a lot. Well, I think, I think it's when you swap with Legacy, which is like the Shift E skill. So every four seconds you could do it. But it, that idea was like, I was like, oh my god, man. Like, that's going to be so annoying. A bunch of fucking Drax with E buff that can't be CC'd and they're just recovering hit points. And then they changed that. And now Legacy is, is literally just, just the C-swap. And then the passive, uh, the quote-unquote extra effect is now when you're in Hexblood, you get a 15 or a 10% attack speed buff that's just always up. And then when you swap to Dragon Blood, which is the form with the bigger spear, uh, then you just always have a plus 15 AP buff. And then the e-buff also completely changed from at least what they thought the leak was. So now it's 30 AP, 10% attack speed, 30% critical hit rate, and all accuracy 15%. So the, the point is, everything in the BDO codex was completely off, but everyone was reading it like, dude, this is insane. I mean, rightly so. It, it was kind of insane. Yeah, it was but, insane. But, uh... No worries, I suppose. False alarm, everybody. Yeah, false alarm. Yeah, I was really curious. Like, dude, how is this going to work? This is actually insane. Um, Yeah, that passive thing was one of the things that got linked to me. And I was just in there like, there's no way that that's going to make it to live, right? And turns out it didn't even make it to the test lab. So. Yeah, it didn't even make it to the test. <laughs> it's also crazy that in, in the codex, they showed all the skills like kind of in reverse. Also, the Dragon Breath skill was way crazier on Codex. It did more damage and only had a 13 second cooldown. So that, that part was kind of crazy. Yeah, this dude, this class feels so fun, Rez. It's so fun. I, I honestly think that because you do feel like you're... It's not fast. It's not like a super fast class in, in terms of rotating your skills. But... It's not slow at all. Like, it feels way better than the pre-awaken kit to me. Mm -hmm. Like, way, way, way better. A at least the just running through abilities feels way, way, way better than the pre-awaken kit, at least while killing mobs. Uh, and then the mobility also just seems really, really fast. It seems very much like Suck Drack, but I don't know. To me, it feels better. It feels more precise. If that makes sense. Suck track always feels like it's like floating a little bit. 
but Ford R and B and Ford E. Ford R and B is their iframe. So they have two iframes. They can use all their pre awakened movement. You can use it in awakening, and it just leaves you in awakening. So, for example, their AD R and B is just an awakening mobility skill, which is pretty cool. Which I believe, if I remember correctly, that you had called out from the trailer. Yeah, they look I like. It. I think yeah, I had yeah. said like no, nah, because it goes more like catty corner. Than you're that, right. But... You're right, though. Yeah, it does. It's like a weird. It doesn't just diagonally move you up to the left. It starts off moving left and then kind of juts you a little bit forward. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's kind of interesting. And then the shift any direction is just the. God, what do they call this skill? It's just the super armor side dash. I gotta kill these stupid mobs so I can change the settings so my UI doesn't go away. All right, let's see. Uh, why would that ever be on by default? Close UI when you're hit. <laughs> Shit tilts me. All right, so it's uh dragon. Dude, that's like okay. So I got a couple friends to try out Black Desert uh, uh -huh. yesterday and today. Uh, and whenever I was like going through the settings, trying to like make their life a little bit more bearable, because they were like, "Why do I keep getting pop ups about like horses and marketplace registrations?" And I'm like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" All right, yeah, we gotta go through the settings and fix some things real quick. <laughs> and one of the things that's on by default for some bizarre reason is low power option. Which is like, why? Why is that on by default? That's so bizarre oh, to me. the one that reduces performance to save your GPU or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one where it's like, we could use more of your computer to give you a better experience, but we're going to choose not to. Oh, it's like, yeah. why? <laughs> what the fuck? That is odd. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that is odd. I forgot about that. Like, first of all, what a bizarre option to have. And then what an even more bizarre decision to have it on by default. Who would want that on? Combat assistance is also on by default. Which one is that one? I don't have that one on by default. Mine is off already. Combat assistance is, I think, the one where it, like, shows you, like, the combos that you can do. So it's like whenever you use a skill, a little pop-up will show up that says, like, use this skill. No, no, use no. Use this skill. Use that the skill. The assistance is that one they added, remember, like, a year and a half ago where it auto-aims your auto-attacks. It, like, turns oh, your character. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know why, but mine is off. They're saying it, it's on by default, but mine is off. Maybe on a new account. Maybe they turned it off in settings. I don't know how these pre-setup accounts work. Like, it's weird because it sets you up with a full set of gear. 312, 314, 403, full pen, C20, with silent Labresca and silent Fallen God armor. And then you have two Tongue Guard rings. It gives you the Black Spirit artifact set. Um, the Black Spirit Rage one. And then they don't give you any crystals. And you're like, that's weird. It has literally everything. You have a horse, a horse flute, infinite pots, skill points, and then no no crystals in your gear. So I think a lot of people run out and start testing out the PVE because it's like with no crystals. I have a feeling a lot of people test it with no crystals. Would not surprise me. Yeah. So I'm curious uh, for your perspective on this, Rez, if this is something... We'll talk about 1v1 after this, but if you think that this is something you would legit play. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely going to try it out. I'm, like I said uh, last episode, this is the first class that I'm actually like looking forward to the release to since uh, probably like Sage, Sage uh, Succession. Because mm -hmm. I thought Sage Succession looked pretty neat, and then it came out and it was busted as shit. And also, I didn't really like it because it felt too slow, which is ironic because that's kind of what I like about it now. Um, <laughs> yeah. But at the time, I was kind of like, eh, I don't really care for it. Um, so yeah, it's been a while since I was like excited to try out a, a, a class or a specialization, I guess, in this case. Um, but I am. I'm, I'm excited for it. Can we talk about 
Well, sorry, continue, no. and I'll bring it up later. Yeah, uh, I, well, I was gonna say, I... I could see this being my tag for a long time. Because part of my, my requirement is, it needs to look cool, it can't be slow, and it can't feel like it has no depth. And this, like, checks all those boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously the PvE needs to be good. I suspect it'll be at least average. I, I can't see it being bad. I don't think it'll be bad. But it'll be at least average. I think it'll be at least average. Unless they randomly nerf it. Which is, they did do that to suck Drac. Which is the ironic thing. But they nerfed the PvE damage on suck Drac twice. And then we got it on live and it was like, dude, this feels really bad. Why, why didn't you reverse some of these nerfs? Um, dude, there's someone on this test server that there's people that are enhancing stuff and listing the items on market. I don't understand. <laughs> a pen debo just got listed on the marketplace on global apps. Like why? Who's making pen debos and listing them here? It's only people more with, with test accounts. Who, more importantly, who's buying them? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you can get unlimited silver from the vendor here, but it's just so odd. Biohack is confused. He's on here just making money. He doesn't know any other way to play. He just came on the test server and started gambling for profit. <laughs> he plays he plays Awake in Draconia for two seconds and he's like, alright, let's start enhancing. Yeah. Um anyway, so yeah, it, I, I could see me like so one I'm excited because it's going to be there's going to be so many people playing it. I think mostly because it's just really cool. But yeah. I, I'm also happy that it's going to take some attention away from Hash. Which means maybe Hash won't get nerfed. Because <laughs> the, the new Hash changes are pretty lit. Um, and I'm excited about it actually being fun to use in PvE. So maybe I'll grind on it. Because I need like 100 bill. You know? That's a lot of money. Why did they... Question. Why did they remove... The if I remember correctly, they did this. Why did they remove the pop up whenever you get an artifact, but they didn't remove the cheer? I'm not sure, but on Global Labs this week, they actually did remove the cheer from the artifact. Oh, thank God! Yeah, so that's coming. You got two more weeks of cheering your ass off, and then it'll be over. Yeah, so the cheer is actually going to go away. Uh, what were you going to say? You said, "Can we talk about something?" What were you going to say? Okay, so okay, so you, you know me. You know I have to do what I am here to do and be mm -hmm. Mr. Debbie Downer. Mm -hmm. Um and I have to I have to pitch to you a complaint that you can then deflect on behalf of Pearl Abyss because that's why you're here. Okay. So my question to you or my complaint to you is why are they doing a whole nother season? for Draconia Awakening when we all already have Draconias from last season. Mm. Does that not seem well, like a very bizarre decision? Yeah, it's the thing is is like the I think the season was going to happen no matter what, right? Cuz they just do four seasons a year, one for each one for each. Well, didn't they season? skip like one or two last year? They skipped one for a stretch, but that was it. But the, I don't. I forget how many there's been now. There's been like what six? They only had one stretch of time where they didn't have a season. But I don't know. I think it just lined up that way. I mean, also, yeah, just money. Like people, it, it's funny because I think there's a group of people that probably bought and committed to Drac, and there's going to be a whole different group that are more excited about Awakening. So it's kind of like double dip in the cash, especially on newer players. Double dip. <laughs> Yeah, double dipping on yeah, the Yeah, well, I don't like double dipping, Frosty. I'm kind of a germaphobe about stuff like that. So well, They love double dipping. Getting that cash Yeah, because they're gross. Yeah. But it's, not, it's, not, it's not socially acceptable to double dip when you're at the table with a whole bunch of other people, you fucking animals. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I wish you were wrong. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, the season was going to happen regardless. It does make you wonder, though, like, which one, 
was Drac already ready? Like, the timing is too convenient, you know? Like, was Drac ready for the two weeks? And they're just like, yeah, but we're going to release it on the season? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, which very well could be the case. Would not surprise me if it was. I don't know. It's just weird. Because it's like, I already have a Draconia, so like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know, just a weird thing. It's not even really a complaint. It's just like a what the fuck. Well, it's 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 another low power option to me. I'm just like, why? <laughs> it's so weird. Well, you know what's what's sitting with me that's kind of weird is so they said this is the first class that they started development on Awakening after Succession was done, right? Right. Yeah. And. If you think about the timeline, let's say, so we got Succession April 3rd. I don't know when they they considered it done. Let's just say for sake of argument, they considered it done by the end of March, right? Yeah. Um, that means that they spent only four months on this class and it feels so in-depth compared to a lot of other classes. Am I am I crazy and like being baffled by that part of it? Like I don't know no. what their development cycle is when they release both Suck and Awakening at the same time. But from Corsair to Drac was a year, and I don't know this Drac Awakening feels and seems way more fluid and polished to me than Suck. Yeah, no, I can I can see that. Uh, I also don't know if I believe them. Okay, Just they, could, they could straight up be lying. Yeah, like they could have been working Putting on, on the Awaken. tinfoil hat? I don't know if I believe them. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. I can maybe believe that like, oh, well, we didn't start like writing the code and shit and like, you know, making the assets and stuff. But I have a feeling that, because it just kind of has to be. You have to at least have a concept of what the Awakening is whenever you're designing the rest of the class. Maybe you don't have the specifics, maybe you don't have the skills, maybe you don't have the animations, but you have, at the very minimum, like, a concept and, like, an idea of what you can do, right? Right. So, I don't know if it's as, like, cut and dry as they make it seem. Like, oh, yeah, we weren't even thinking about it until just four months ago, so. Hmm. So, then, do you think... Do you think it got more development time than Succession? Uh, I don't know. See, the problem with Succession, though, and why I think that it's kind of unfair to compare the two, though, is that so if it's, for Succession, the gimmick is the ions, right? Mm -hmm. So here's, here's what happened. Someone said, hey, what if we did, like, a cool mechanic for the next class? And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And that... that gimmick ends up being ions so now every other thing around the class is developed around or around the specialization is developed around the ions right right and the thing is is that i don't like ions you don't like ions other people don't like ions but i mean ions isn't necessarily or let me rephrase that isn't inherently like a bad thing and it's not as if like they they didn't put like time and effort into trying to design ions to be interesting, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who play Succession Draconia that find it interesting, myself and you not included. So I don't know. I I, I think that we're a little biased because we don't like the mechanic, and so to me and you, we might look at some the gimmick of ions and say like, oh well, that's like a very uninspiring and probably took like five seconds or something but i mean who knows yeah i don't know the stand this the switching i'm telling you it but the so switching good. see i mean but the switching okay here's the thing about the switching though i i love the switching okay but and this is a big but but the switching is just c swapping that's all it is it's it's not it's groundbreaking in that it's not c-swapping it's c-swapping within the awakening kit but it is just c-swapping that's all it is so it's it's not exactly 
like revolutionary and like a holy shit we've never seen this before but it's cool in that it is something that we're familiar with in a different way right yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if ions and the succession kit as a whole got more development time than the awakening that wouldn't surprise me honestly just because the gimmick of the awakening is something that we have in a million classes already just in a different form which i guess you can make a similar argument for ions in terms of like you know excel or um ebuffs like uh classes ebuffs like changing ability slightly even if that's just like reducing um charge time on like you know, Reckless Blow, or uh, Ancient Wave, or, like, whatever else, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Who fucking knows what's going on in those fucking dudes' heads, you know? No one has the answers. They don't like talking to us. Who fucking knows? Uh, you know what? You know what's a... a com- this class remind The pre-awakened stuff reminds me so much of... Weirdly, of Maywa. I guess it kind of makes sense, because the spears... But, mm. like, for example, Ford F especially. Let me see the name. Let me find the name of this skill. I'm still learning it. Um, so, Ford F is Sundering Roar. This skill reminds me so much of Maywa's, like, Dash Ford. Wait, let me see if I could stream this. I, I don't want... I don't want to mess up my mic. <laughs> yeah, so let me know if this fucks up my mic. Hold on. Okay, can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, sir. All right, so this, tell me this doesn't look like a Maywa ability. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, not that's not Sundering Roar. Sorry, that's back F. It's, uh... I mean, that's kind of similar to the Maywa's. Don't they have an ability where they kind of, like, leap forward and stab yeah. their Care Spear forward? Um... Oh my god, where where's the stupid... Oh, it's up here, huh? For Fate Beckons, yeah, this one. Yeah, this skill reminds me of Maywa so much. Um, even, even like the SLMB skill... Again, I, I, I don't know all the skill names, so I'm just pressing buttons. Yeah, Savage Decree, even this skill kind of reminds me a little bit of Maywa. When Maywa's doing all their little pokey pokes and stabs. Yeah, Pedal Drill. Right, yeah. Yeah, shift L and B after a dash too. I don't know. Very Maywa esque. I kind of dig it. Dude, oh, I mean, so I can cool, see the man. comparison. It's so cool. It's so smooth, Rez. This class feels so fluid to me. I, someone yesterday was saying it feels clunky, but dude, I don't know. This shit is like butter to me. I can't believe this is on the test server the way it feels, honestly. Yeah. So what's interesting about because I think it looks smooth. Obviously, I haven't played it, but I I, I think it looks smooth. I don't think it mm-hmm. looks clunky. Um, but what's interesting about that is that like they've been kind of doing a a kind of bizarre trend for a while now, where they try to make the awakening and the succession like feel very very different, mm-hmm. right? They kind of did this with Sage. They did this with Nova, especially Nova's like the biggest example. Um, so they've been doing that on a couple classes for a while. And it kind of results in the class feeling a little clunky to a lot of people. It feels weird, I think, whenever Nova's like Awaken Nova suddenly bust out the, the shield, right? And I think that's why they pretty much only do that for the wall and the grab, you know? Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's just fucking bizarre. The only time you use a, uh, uh, a, a, uh, fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? Pre-awakening sage skill on awakening sage is like rift chain and maybe like what spatial collapse and like, that's it. Um, yeah, and I think well. it's because it just feels like it doesn't belong. Whereas here you have, again, what is essentially a C swap mechanic, but because you built the two sides of what is essentially the C-swap to be, like, very, um, 
like flow together like well and like you design them at the same time and with the other side of the sea swamp in mind and they're very close i think it results in it feeling and looking at least from my point of view but other people have said it feels really smooth as well i've heard that a lot i think it results in a much more smooth experience yeah so tldr prolibus stop doing that weird shit where awaken nova is a fucking zoop zoop and then succession is a goddamn tank it doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> Yeah. At least not if you're going to keep doing it hybrid, right? Like, okay, here's the other thing, right? That this this kind of implies, which we talked about last time. If they want to start making Awakenings its own thing where you don't fuck with the pre-Awakening, I am 100% okay with that. Okay. But, first of all, if they're going to do that with old classes, then they're going to have to rework the old classes. Because the old classes especially are heavily built around pre-awakening and awakening skills interchangeably also like what is then the point of fucking uh like absolutes right like yeah. it's very bizarre and what if players like awakening but they still want to use awake uh pre-awakening skills you know it just kind of like fucks with things a lot i don't know this this might just be a one-off, but this might have some very serious implications for, like, the future of class design and balance, actually. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, right now it's, like, a w pre-awakening, at least if I think about it on ha Hash, is feels like the most balance between where you're pre-awakening, you can actually use for some damage and a lot of utility. But most classes feel like they're just utility, pre-awakening, damage awakening. Yeah, most newer classes, yeah. Yeah, utility in that... Well, even like Kuno and Sork, right? Like, you're not really killing people with your pre-awakening. You're just getting catches or moving. Right, yeah, true. Um, but I don't I know mean, about how Zerker... Wait, like, I don't know, how do you describe Zerker's pre-awakening in terms of the relationship with awakening? Uh, Zerker's kind of a weird one because your grabs are in pre-awakening. At least two of your grabs are in pre-awakening as well as all of your heals and your primary movement in Lava Piercer, right? So, I mean, I guess it would fit in that same category as, like, utility. Um, you know, plus the grabs. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, it's It's weird. But, like... I mean, the thing is, though, is, like, with the newer classes, you're not even really doing that much, right? Mm. Like, how often are Awakening Sages using anything other than Rift Chain from the pre-Awakening? Like, genuinely. Like, I'm curious. Uh, right, uh, I, I, honest, I don't think the, ever. The good ones that... No, no, no. The good ones, like, in Dueling and Large Scale, they definitely use Spatial Collapse in the Flow a lot. And now the new Void Gateways, because it's so fast. Like, they actually do use it a lot. The more after the most recent changes, they're using pre awakening a lot. The bet, really, yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. They actually do, but not like the whole kit. It, that's the thing. It's like they're using like a skill here or there. There were bombs are still mostly crap. I guess you use one of them to switch, and then I I don't know, but they definitely use spatial collapse, finishing touch. I don't know if they really use Ator's energy that much since you could just rest storm or lightning prison. And obviously, and what about in. like Nova Awakening? Like, how much of the pre awakening kit are you using? So, that's another one, too. It just depends on, for example, if you're fighting a Sork, you can just go into pre awakening and block and just use um, cord or command opening to just throw out pet CCs. You can use it to buy time. So, you can use it a lot, but the here's the problem with both of those kits for people that love the awakening kit. I don't think the pre awakening kits are that fun to use for most people is the real problem oh, no, with those two yeah. because of how jarring and different it is. There's obviously value in using it, but it's like Kuno pre-awakening is fun. Ninja pre-awakening is fun. Hash mm -hmm. pre-awakening is super fun, but Nova and Sage pre-awakening feel like you just have to use it because there's a couple powerful things in there. Not necessarily that it's fun, especially if you're drawn to the awakening style of both those classes that are fast and lightning and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Hey, Nayashi made it. Made so, Drac is weirdness. As someone was pointing out, like, a lot of classes use their pre-awakening kit for protected CCs, right? 
And mm. this class, because the only way to switch to pre-awakening is through one of your bombs or doing the unprotected C swap, like I don't see you really using pre-awakening for catches. So then your catches are really just your grab and your core skill. I, I haven't learned the class enough to know if any of these other skills can actually be used as a catch. I'll have to see. But it, it seems like it's grab, core skill, and then maybe you use, um what do they call this one? It's a little uh, Azure Onslaught for the pre-awakened dash stiff. But I don't know. I, I don't see... Like on Kuno in my pre-awakening, I'm going to try to CC you with Block Jump. I'm going to try to CC you with Shadow Stomp. Flash Slash. The Grab is the pre-awakening. Like there's kind of a list of skills that you're going to be trying to use from pre-awakening. This one, I don't... I just can't see you doing it that much. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, they'll, they'll uh, patch that and make it so Kuno can't access those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they just remove access to it? Wait, hold on, let me turn you up now, Ashley. For those who don't That's know... That's the Kuno buff. No, but see, I think... Hold on, though, because, like, I, I think it, it, he's partially correct. I could see them doing something that is akin to what, like, Draconia has, and also Guardian with Juggernaut. Where they essentially take an important pre-awakening skill and just make the awakening version of it, essentially. And then you don't have to do the pre-awakening anymore. Because now you have the important skill in the awakening kit itself. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Kind of what they did with Mayo Awakening. They basically made it so that Red Moon is accessible via Awakening now. So yeah, see, there's another good example of like you take this skill that is like very much like useful in the pre Awakening kit, and you just make an Awakening version of it, meaning you don't have to do the pre Awakening anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the only thing that's really worthwhile in pre Awakening now is basically the Cyclone slashes and the Stub Arrow and Tiger Blade and. Like honestly, D Bite and Carver they have their uses, but they're relatively weak compared to right. the rest of the Awakening kit, so it's just not worth it to be in And even the Stub Arrow, you can use Stub Arrow from Awakening, correct? Like from Well, no. Um I mean you can use that evasive shot, but I personally don't like that. It's too short of an iframe. It doesn't so you, okay. it, it doesn't actually serve a purpose. So the only time you use Stub Arrow is if you see swap first. Yeah, okay. exactly. Which you know, we can use three stubs in a row. So that does have some potential utility, but I actually don't really catch people's stub all that often anymore. It's usually just my awakening kit nowadays. Yeah. I guess like the Musa one, because they have the Rebomb one, that's pretty cracked. Yeah, the Rebomb quick shot is actually pretty decent chip damage too, so worth it for them to still utilize theirs. Um, now actually, what, what are your thoughts on the, the Drac kit? overall and then I'll I'll have to I'll get to my apologies in a second but start let's start with your overall oh, apologies feeling. yeah I owe Nash right. you some apologies wait about what? <laughs> the grapple oh <laughs> yeah the grapple is Pearl Abyss abandoned they me pulled on a that fast one, one on you, huh? yeah they fucked me over <laughs> I was like dude I'm glad it doesn't have a grab I think that's unique and cool and it's like but it does have yeah. a grab and it's like fuck I, okay. I like I was just like uh I was reading the patch or the uh the skills and uh the main one that was being thrown around was impale and I seen that one I'm just like are you fucking kidding me they even <laughs> debated us on the trailer Yeah oh. that's the thing I wouldn't have said I wasn't like for me it was like 50/50 that it would get yeah. a grab I, I wasn't sure I know I was leaning sure, I was but... leaning pretty heavily on the 70 <laughs> Yeah, they they were getting a grab, but still, I, you're you're justified in saying that. Well, they usually always show it. I'm like, fair, that's fair, but yeah, no, they're like, yeah, surprise, fuck you guys. Uh, but, so I uh, just found a bug. Can I show you guys this? Because this is sure. an interesting one. Uh, oh, no, with uh my guardian. So I, I put on this new helmet because I thought it looks cool. I got a new outfit that I've been using. And uh, it doesn't a... doesn't quite. Uh, <laughs> you can, for some bizarre reason, it doesn't block out the emblems from NPCs. 
so you oh. could see the emblems above P- NPCs oh, through. Yeah, that's weird. yeah, right. It's like it's your so bizarre is, uh, looking. That's Most funny. of your hair is translucent, basically. I'm doing a quick what the mic fuck? check. Is my mic fucked? No, no, you're okay. good. No, your mic's fine. Yeah, whenever I, it, just as a reminder, whenever I'm on Global Lab, sometimes, and it only happens in Discord, like the, the stream or the recording comes out fine, but it'll like turn me in. You've heard it before, Nash, I think, where my, it yeah. just turns to crackly sand. I don't know why it happens yeah, when I'm on Global Discord. Labs only. It's very strange. I think that's Discord. But, um. So, Nash, yeah, yeah what's I mean, your, your first impressions of the class? So first impressions, I didn't actually get to interact with the class, so I only got to watch streams like Vert streaming it, uh, Blue was streaming it, and um, a couple other individuals um, that I watched and getting their takes on it. They were showing me some stuff and it looks pretty impressive from an initial design standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably from what everyone was saying, they said it's really smooth out of the gate, which is usually not the case with a new release. It's usually kind of clunky. There's at least some aspect of it that isn't quite right. And then later they, you know, patch it and make things more smooth later down the road. But everyone's been basically saying that they love how smooth it is. The transitioning between the two stances, I guess, is Mm -hmm. the best way to easily describe them. Um, It looks cool. Um, It seems to me that it's not going to be necessarily as oppressive damage wise, just like upfront damage, mm-hmm. like super front loaded with suck Drake. Right. Um, it's hard to tell obviously without it being in live and feeling it for myself uh, against my gear, how much damage it actually is, but um, it doesn't look as, you know, initially oppressive. I think what it's, it's main things is going to be is, it's decently fast without yeah. being like stupidly fast. Um, I'd say it's pretty fair on the speed. Um, the grab obviously is um, seemingly pretty good. Um, I haven't heard anyone complain about the speed of the grab. Usually that's kind of like one of those things with the newer classes. Usually the grab's kind of like a lot different. Either it's a range grab with some long animation like Corsair or. Um, to something a little bit different compared to the conventional grabs. I think this one's a little bit more conventional, so it's relatively fast activation. It, it or the weird, or like... the bizarre grab into movement, yeah. which is the Nova grab. <laughs> yeah, the Nova's, yeah, definitely an unorthodox style that they went with. But it seems like um, Suicide Fall without the block jump. Yeah, I think that's pretty Or fair. I forgot, they. Cha- I keep forgetting they changed the name to that of that skill. But, um, of I mean, jump? no, the grab used to be called Suicide Fall and they changed the name to, I forget what it is. Why'd they change the name? I think because Suicide, Suicide Fall was such a, a cool name. Recently. I think because Suicide is a issue in, oh, please. <laughs> well, not, not here, but the suicide rate in other countries is way higher. Eh, who cares? It was a cool name for a skill. They read that, <laughs> they read that skill name and yeah. It's just how it works nowadays. Inconsider- hey, they had to also change Sticky Snowflake, all right? True. I mean, after using that skill for so long, you know what happens after that, you know? <laughs> yeah, is but, that uh, also why they changed Fiery Crevice? There, there, there are some countries that have fiery crevices that kill a lot of people every year, so they thought it was insensitive. I guess. Uh, that one was... I think that one had a uh, sexual connotation they had to remove. <laughs> oh man same with sticky like, snowflake it's like uh after taco bell night yeah <laughs> um they're gonna come for devastation next don't take my devastation oh yeah but the yeah i mean the class looks pretty cool i mean as far as like uh, aesthetically and you know how it plays from the looks of things it seems to me and i could be like completely off on this, but I kind of get Valk vibes from it. Um, at least from the comboing. Sort I of. agree. There definitely are some Valk pokey poke vibes, but I also here, let me see. Can you see my Discord stream? Um, I'm not in it, but give me a second. 
right, yeah, show, the, show, them, these, show them the Maywa move. Yeah, these couple skills in particular actually remind me of Maywa a lot. Hold on, let me swap to this. So the oppression a, one. A, SL and B, I feel like if you're just doing it fast, like with the way the sparks look, kind of remind me. But also this one. Tell me that's not a Maywa skill, straight up. That looks like pedal drill, but right more like straightforward or ice fang maybe yeah that one bit. too how it like stabs into the ground yeah yeah they kind of remind me it's like a cross between Maywa and valk but the yeah. movement feel i'm trying to think of what the movement feels like it feels so much nicer to me than succession the way the movement feels like the side yeah dash, it's more fluid adr and bc the res how it kind of moves me to the right and then dashes forward yeah but in pre-awakening, when you do it, it looks like it's just a straight diagonal yeah, slide. Yeah. But it's the same ability. It's not. It literally, it's the same cooldown, same ability, same keybind. So show me, show me like a standard, like if you're fighting someone's the movement. All right. Well, I haven't I've really fought anyone. Examples. The problem is, I I got back last night, so today was my first oh, day yeah, on it. Right, but that's right. but if I was fighting someone, I mean, it probably it, like like you have. I don't know. You you have a pretty good amount of movement. That you can use. So there, sure. there are some instances where you might be unprotected. There are definitely instances where you might be unprotected, uh, especially. Yeah, that's what. That's what main... I noticed when I was watching some others fight. There, there seems to be some gaps, um, and that could be just because people haven't optimized the playstyle yet. Yeah. Too. But. Um... Yeah, the interesting thing is with the dragonfly is it's the flow that makes it go far, and that's the long cooldown. But you can still do like. Um... What's the what's the cooldown on that actually? I heard ten seconds. So the cooldown on the flow is fifteen seconds. So if you want to do the long, long one, the like one this, with the KD after. Oh uh, no, uh, KD. You yeah, can after. double flight. Yeah, Isn't it's there a flow like, where if she does it like a, a stab dive for KD. You can you extend. Can you can extend the duration of the flight by doing like the evasive maneuvers or whatever, where you turn to the sides. I don't know how to do it exactly. I don't know how to do it either. I've just seen people do it. That's how they were hopping from the the mountain into the Calfion Castle, is they yeah. do the those kind of like swing to the left, swing to the oh, right maneuver to extend it. They're saying to press A or D. All right, let me try that. Oh, okay. So that one goes a little further when you do the twisty. Yeah, yeah. and you can twist the opposite direction too. I believe you can twist both directions to get maximum distance. I think so, yeah. Wait, why did that just happen? So, I'm not positive because I haven't played it. All I've been doing is watching people play it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, yeah that's a lot farther. Yeah, that one's yeah it's just a wee bit farther than uh, Lava Piercer and a Predatory Frosty. Just a so wee what's bit. The cooldown? What's it, the cooldown? Is it actually? I, I, I wouldn't mind you coming in here and go, go Lava Piercer and a Predatory next to me. I would love to see that actually side by side. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot further, my guy. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. It's a lot further than the oh god, tackling rock lava piercer predatory. I think if I if I were I could probably cover the same distance if I did lava piercer tackling rock, lava piercer tackling rock. I could probably cover a similar distance, but that's me using four skills uh, as opposed to you using one and being an essay the whole time, by the way, as well. Yeah, well, it's also the difference between one of us using half a stam bar, the other one recovering stamina. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong there. That is true. Nerf, uh, nerf the stamina <laughs> on Slug Zerker. So the I mean, they that, needed to nerf it a long time ago. They still haven't done much of it. I'm trying to think of a class off the top of my head. I, I almost feel like the move... Oh God. I'm trying to think of a, a comp for the in-fight mobility. Um... What like where it's, it's not her Yeah, where it's similar because it's not herky jerky like um. Ah, God, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of like uh. Yeah, like Awaken Nova is very jerky with its movement, but it's like super fast. Mm hmm. It does a lot of hit and stab, hit stab, hit stab, run. No, not Guardian because they're the some of the movements are way too fast to be like Guardian. Yeah, gar they're like they're a lot farther distance than Guardian's movements. Yeah, they're like Guardian style, but the speed is definitely faster. Yeah, maybe like Hash. It almost feels like Awaken Hash in fight mobility. Except instead of the iframe, it's super armor every two seconds. Yeah, because yeah, it, 
it definitely feels a little bit like that. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's really cool, though. Everything feels like it flows together super, super well to me. Yeah. They did a good job with it, for sure. Like I said, aesthetically and smoothness-wise, it's... The movement is definitely... Solid. Okay, so here's the thing. In fairness, Rez, on, in the trailer... I think he literally uh, just... Went, he just went like, AFK, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to save it to tell him, because in the trailer, they don't do the side-by-side -side movement. That's no. all I had to go off of, yeah, is what I saw don't. in the trailer, right? Like... I didn't necessarily see them move left and right in the trailer. I did see them do just the one spin. The twirl around, yeah. Yeah, which like if I just do the one directional spin like he does in that trailer, I, I still stand yeah. by Tenon Cutter is going to take me further and be more precise. Well, yeah, like I told you, uh, like I did a test uh, comparing, like, for example, my chase movement in Battle Arena compared to mm -hmm. a clip that I got um, that I did a comparison and that particular instance where he didn't do the extra flow stuff it was basically the same speed with roughly the same stamina usage on Mayo or musa Mayo. right they would compare to let me see let me find that clip one second yeah like canadian is pointing out it'd be interesting to see on live with mouse movement but i highly doubt it's gonna let you mouse move like Basically, nothing in succession uh, lets you mouse move. I would be surprised if they don't allow it. This clip, really wait. What? Which, why would you be surprised? Because like suck. Literally, you can't mouse move anything. So why for the would same you be... reason they didn't show us the grab in the trailer? Yeah, but we already have suck. <laughs> That's my like, justification. So at this point. All, all of the movement outside of the dra the only one really in question would be the dragon thing, right? Because all of the pre awakened yeah. movement on live, like you can't mouse move. Oh, it. I'm sorry. I thought that's what you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. What, which other movement did you think were you originally referring to? Well, just the movement in general. But maybe you uh, can mouse move the dragon thing. I just would be surprised because like a lot of the new classes the just don't thing. let you do it. Yeah, that's fair. It's just like I, I look at like how Zerker's old movement used to be. We can just mouse move. Oh, the shit you were out comparing to this clip. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. In this particular instance, which he didn't do the extra flow stuff, but mm -hmm. like. I was there at the same speed with just Chase, so... Yeah, the two flow things make the fly way further. Yeah. Uh, that's an extended cooldown. What's the cooldown on that? That one is 15 seconds. Yeah. I mean, 15 seconds, that's not really all that long, to be honest. It's not that long, because you have plenty of movement to on the in-between anyway. Uh, so, but basically I look at that as the engage and then disengage type movement. I'm not really seeing it really as something that's utilized in combat because of like the, sh the turns unless unless you're saying what you're saying about mouse movement not being allowed on it, if that ends up being true i don't think it's going to be used for in combat necessarily i think it's going to be used for engaging and disengaging primarily yeah in that case it's i guess not really that big a deal i guess i don't, I don't know it's hard to say although it will make uh weaken draconia's uh the new uh castle um seal team they're seal team six now <laughs> Lons have a peggy. friend yeah who needs a peggy now when they got just awakened draconias yeah, yeah. seal team six is just going to be lawns awakened draconias and pegasus users all right so res i i will concede the lava piercer thing however i will defend myself in this the trailer did not do the full movement that you can do so based yeah. on no, what yeah, I saw yeah. in the trailer, no, I didn't. I, I, if I saw this full version, that you can tell just by how long you're in it that you're moving super far, even if yeah, the perspective yeah. would have been hard. Whereas like the ones yeah. they were doing was just kind of the straight shot. Right. Yeah. Because that shit and is it, a yeah, whole no, different level. They, 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 they didn't. Show, they didn't show the extensions on the trailer. Hundred percent. Yeah. And then you can I, even I change agree. that. I agree with based on the the trailer. It's, you know. Definitely gets a false like you can, of how far they really go. You can do a dash after that too. That's the thing. It's like so you're not like it's not like that that's the end of your movement. Yeah, no, not by any means. I just like okay, so if I think about because I, I see like, you know, I, for example, the the Musa that's like, well, if Drac could do that, what's the point of playing Musa? But it's like on my hash or my Kuna, it's like I don't feel like same. I don't feel like that. It's like well it's yeah, it's super fast, but it's not like it's not taking away Mus from anything I can do on my class. M Musa's 
still got, in my opinion, the superior movement. I'm curious, can you use that ability at, like, maybe, like, a quarter stamina to see what happens when you run out of stamina? Yeah. I'll try. I just want to see if you just stop, if it, like, like, if it just does a protected animation, an unprotected animation, any animation at all. I'm just curious to see. Do it over a cliff, too. I'm curious. Trying to find skills that stam lock so I can actually drain my stamina down without wasting that skills cooldown. Uh, ha- having trouble finding stam lock skills? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, Ross is struggling to use stamina. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to like use the class that much yet. So I know we're just. Fucking I'm with still. It. Uh, I have no idea what these skills are. Oh, just sprint. Duh. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> duh. Oh no. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna use it with twenty-five percent. Here we go. No, it just it just stops. It literally it just, just stops, stops you. you. Yeah. Oh, that's that's good then. They're not gonna just like get away scot free for having no resources. That'd be hilarious. Imagine if you could get down to five percent stamina and still let you do the and whole thing. And still run away no hell far. Yeah, that would be tragic. Dude, why didn't I think of sprinting? What a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! It's gonna. It also has this. I don't know how much you'll use it, but if you don't want to like blow cooldowns, you could jump R and B, shift L and B. Yeah. It's got some cool movements. Like I can't deny, like the uh just everything about the way they designed the movement of this class is really cool. Like it definitely gives you the perception that you're like just you're just booking it. Yeah, you're flying around. It feels yeah. really, really fun. Like um, I said, they did a they did a good job on the on the release of it for sure. So right when you came in, we were kind of slowly getting into the 1v1 stuff. But I, I was saying, I again, I don't know the kit well enough yet. So yeah. maybe some of these skills are actually really good fast catches. And I, I just haven't figured it out yet because I'm still, you know, yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. Literally no idea. So outside of the core skill, like it feels like you're going to have the core skill, which is six second cooldown float attempt that dashes you forward. You're going to have the grab. And then I, I don't know what else you catch people with. Because I'm, again, like I said, I'm still uh, new. So maybe maybe there's something else people catch with that's like pretty good to throw out mid-fight. Not too sure. Like SF, I mean, most of the streams I was watching was just Drake on Drake actions, so it's hard to tell really what's, what's actually, you know, catching people per se, except the obvious one is the grab. But yeah, a lot of people um, are saying BSR, but it's... I don't know how realistic it is that you're just going to be 50% BSRing for, as a random CC attempt. It's a lot of BSR to commit for an attempted CC. Yeah. When you could just save up for your 100% and either get a good alt off or get the rage absorbed for 60 seconds, even in Solaire, you know? Yeah. The thing is, like, if... I kind of wish... Um, People were able to fight against some other classes, but obviously there was a lot of hype around people testing out Drake, so it was a lot of Drake on Drake fights. Because you don't really get a very good perspective on you know people that are on experienced classes versus someone that's on Drake to really understand how they're catching people. Like, what's the common ways you'd end up being caught is obviously going to be something that's flushed out over time when people get more used to the kits, but usually can kind of get a decent idea yeah. when they're fighting other classes with people that have experience on those classes. Yeah, I'm, I'm the really... The 1v1, from what I'm hearing, though, from a lot of streamers, they say the 1v1's going to be what it's primarily good at. They, they foresee that, based on their initial ass- assessment, and obviously still being new with the kit, that they think large scale is probably not going to be as good as uh, Suck. Yeah, well, shift arm. I mean, suck standard for large scale is crazy, right? Because it's just yeah, it's so just so much absurd. AOE damage and stuff. Yeah, but I guess like it's like okay, if they just if it's really just the two CCs that you're actually catching people with, I don't, I don't know. It, like if I'm on an awaken hash, I don't know how scary that actually is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sorry what are say. there? Are there a bombs catches? Wait, they have the shout. The shout is an SA uh, stiff, right? 
large AOE what, stiff. What they show? Catch with that. The dragon have, breath. Or what show? They have they something that's like Maywa's oppression. Do they? Yes, they do. Oh, what skill is that? Uh, um, I'm down with something like that. That sounds. Hold on. That's what I was thinking. Like, if it has something like that, that'll work. Yeah, it has. It has that for sure. Hold on. Aerial burst. No, aerial burst is not a CC. I was watching Anders' video last night or this morning on it. You could do. Maybe he used the core. Oh, the aerial burst core. But then you have to. Then you're trading a six second super armor dash he with didn't? a float. Yeah, you need the core. I don't think he said it. it was a. I don't think he said it was a core. Well, I'm looking at it. The aerial burst core gives stiffness on the first hit, and knockdown on the second. No, that's not it. That's not the skill. Okay. I'll find it. Tectonic slam. No, this one's also not a CC. Or maybe this version, Ford. Yeah, Forty is the one is the core that like I think most people are using. Uh oh. <laughs> Wait, am I is Discord back? What was that? <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, Renayashi, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, Discord yeah. literally just reloaded. Yeah, I think that was just your Discord because of Global Labs. <laughs> That was fucking weird. Yeah, I, I don't... Everyone in chat is naming skills, but they're all skills that don't have CC, so I don't know why they're naming them as catches. Hold on, I'm looking. You'd have to use the core skill, but I, I don't know how you could ever make the argument that any of these cores are better than Tectonic Slam. They're literally like... They're not even comparable. Like... Tectonic Slam is so powerful because it's only a six second cooldown that moves you and has a float. So I don't know why you'd ever use anything else. Maybe it's CCs people noticed on mobs, yeah. But none of these Awaken skills have... Let's see, so SRMB is a KD, but that's just like a short... Although that might actually be... Might not be the worst. Oh, maybe forward F, but it's unprotected. But it has a knockback. Might be able to surprise someone with that. Use aerial burst. Yeah, but aerial burst, again, like, I I'm trying to explain to you the difference between aerial burst and tectonic slam. So aerial burst, as cool as it is for its AoE, it's a longer cooldown and it doesn't move you forward. So you're just wherever you are, that's where your CC attempt is. Whereas like tectonic slam, you can literally just wrap behind people's frontals and you can use it far more often since it's such a... By the way, cooldown. Frosty, you gotta restart yeah. your uh, stream on Discord. Oh. So did we find the oppression skill? It's a zero BSR Zerker ult. Okay, now people are trolling. Uh, what is Burst? You're saying this tectonic slam skill. Is a 0% BSR Zerker ult. Or not Tectonic Slam, uh, Aerial Burst. <laughs> what is it? Let me see it. It's uh, this I'll one. I'll be here. the judge. Uh, let me go over where... It's this. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that one, Chief. I mean, I could definitely see the comparison to Oppression. Which one? The yeah. aerial burst. Lock uh, obliterate? Wait, what happens if you lock obliterate? With the core skill. Oh, it just changes the animation. Does the damage change? That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if people actually use that. I would be surprised though. I feel like Tectonic Slam though is just so nice. And the AoE on it's actually like pretty big. I gotta find the video I watched for it. 
don't know why I'm Wait, doing Discord is muted for you. Can you guys not hear Reslar and Nayashi? Don't scare me like that, Reckless. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, dude, if Discord's muted for you now, that means it's been muted for the whole freaking podcast. So what? So you're saying, Frosty, that there's a better core to take than what they're saying? Yeah, they they keep saying to use this aerial burst skill, which doesn't seem bad. It's just like an AOE KD. I guess it would be with with obliterate locked. Maybe like an AOE KD. Um, let me see. Wait, what is it? It's Shift F, Hex Blood. But it's like, I, that seems so terrible compared to Tectonic Slam. So like that, that's that, that's that core, right? Mm -hmm. And then if I take Tectonic Slam, it's this ability, which is only a six second clone. Look at this. Like a four guard dash with a float on it. I mean a super armor dash with a float on it. That seems way stronger to me. The flow isn't a flow. No, I, I get that. I mean, you could just lock it. You don't have to unspec it. What does the tooltip say? Shift F and Hexblood. Hold F to continue using the skill. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't have a CC unless you have the core skill, which is... And I, I'm pretty sure you would just... I, I don't know why you wouldn't use Tectonic Slam. Like I just spoke to Reezy too. Reezy and Armin both who have been just practicing 1v1 on it for the tournament and they both said Tectonic Slam is far and away the best core. Maybe Aerial Burst is better for like large scale or group fights whereas Tectonic Slam would be better for 1v1s? Yeah, I, I could see that actually for large scale stuff. For sure. Anyway, so at the end of the day, the point was, I, I don't know, aside from the core skill and the grab, what other CCs it actually threatens you with. That was kind of the point I was getting at. And then everyone kept saying to just change the core skill, which is, still doesn't lead to my point. But I, I guess you could use Tectonic Slam without the core for just an unprotected CC attempt. I just don't know. It's pretty risky. It's not that. Uh, it it's just not becomes, like Shadow Slam uh... fast. It just becomes like Comet, right? Isn't Comet like that? Yeah, it's kind of like Comet, but um, a slower version of Comet. And also has Collision. I suppose you could, in a 1v1 though, it might not be too, too bad. Um, now, Ashley, are you afraid that this class is going to become meta? Um, I mean, the class technically is already meta with Suck, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. Yep. Anyone that says otherwise is a damn fool. Yeah, I, I meant the spec specifically, sorry. Um, as far as Awakening is concerned, like I said, probably from a GVG and large scale point of view, maybe not from what other people's feedback was. Now, mind you, I haven't obviously experienced it first firsthand, like against me. Um, it's hard to say. Like, if there's Draconia players out here that feel that the kit for some reason is too slow for them and they get grabbed all the time, versus the particular players that they run against, they might opt for Awakening for those like open world one v one type situations. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be meta though. I think people are going to play this only if the PvE is better and if it's more fun. Right. I don't necessarily and foresee it being better than Succession and a lot of the more um, PvP-centric type uh, content. No, Doomringer does not I think people will just play it if it's more fun. So the only reason why you should see it is they're fun. It's more fun for them. Yeah, I do think it'll be better in 1v1. I just don't think it'll be like... It's not going to feel like fighting a ninja, a hash, or a warrior. Yeah.
Dude, this makes me want way more skills on Awaken Kuno. Now, like I, I was telling Reezy and Armin this before we started the podcast. Like, I feel like with how many abilities are in this kit because of the two stances, plus still having the option for the pre-awaken kit, and then how many of the how much of the pre-awaken kit on Awaken Hash and Awaken Kit are good. Like Kuno feels like such a tiny kit compared to Hash and Drac now. <laughs> like in terms yeah. of just sheer number of options, you know. This it's interesting what they did with this with the stand swapping, like having like basically two sets of abilities. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. Makes it makes it so that like uh, you never feel like you probably have like an issue with cooldowns, like not having skills available. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's definitely going to be something that they don't feel of this kit. Yeah, and they all have separate cool. Even the skills with the same name are uh, independent cooldowns. <laughs> Roast Dame just happened to pop in when I was saying that. He said, "Glad you're saying that." Was wondering if I should give the game another try, but won't now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Nayashi, because it has spears and it's a female, which is the only two reasons you're playing Mewa. Are you going to play this class? <laughs> no. Nah. Not really interested in that. I don't know. I might check it out for like uh, the new season. If it's something that I'm interested in, then I'll dark around with it, I guess. But I made a Sook Draconia last season just mm -hmm. to get all the rewards and whatnot. I didn't really care for that kit. So. Yeah, it feels terrible. I thought it was... Uh, pretty awful and super rewarding for you know players that just don't really want to put too much effort in i don't know just didn't didn't strike me as a fun kit this felt um, like a super flavor of the month gratification type class with suck so just wasn't interested in that But uh, Awakening, I don't know. It looks it looks a lot more fun. I'd have to test it out and see how I feel about it. But will I main it or like have it as a tag? Doubtful. But who knows? Time will tell. Yeah. It looks how about really you? cool. Dude, is, this, well, uh, is this replacing your Kuno tag? Yeah, I mean, for a while, yeah, it's definitely going to. I don't know how good Damn. it is in PvE. It's like the main thing. For yeah, me, it's, it's like, really going to come down to the PvE for it, a lot of players, I think. Yeah, it might be really good in PvE. It has a lot of options, but it, it does feel a little bit like its damage falls off once you don't have the Dragon Breath skill available. Yeah. But also, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm not optimized at all. Like, I'm still literally just pressing buttons and guessing. <laughs> True. But I was comparing what I saw. I, I was telling Reza earlier. I, I was comparing what I saw to my hash. And like hash definitely seems way faster in PV. So. Oh, especially especially now. Yeah, I, I just mean hash. like the PV kill speed feels a lot better on hash. I, I was oh, comparing yeah. it to a... Uh, it was a Gyphon video that I saw. And I was like, oh, okay. It looked fast at, at first, especially if they were e-buffed. But then when they weren't, it was like, oh, okay, it just looks like whatever. Yeah, kind of meh, mediocre-ish. I could see that. The yeah, skill I animations mean, are so sick, though. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting class, for sure. Well, interesting kit. It is, dude. It has two be. It has two one hundred percent. I know that's the first time they ever did something like that, right? Yeah, it's pretty so that's cool. Pretty unique. Maybe it was aerial burst. I don't know. I don't know where. I seen a video and someone. I can't remember who. I thought it was Anders' video, but maybe it wasn't Anders. But someone was like hyped about it, saying like, and showing the range of it. It was uh -huh. like further than Musa shout, and it was stiffing the mobs. The dummies, the training dummies. Yeah, it, but it must when I look be at the aerial though. burst core, it says the stiffness is PVE only. So I'm not sure if maybe that was overlooked when he was providing that info. Whoever it was, yeah, I sure. didn't look at the skill myself. 
Shift F might be what people use to pull. I don't know. Also. Yeah. Let me see. If I go near a pack of mobs, let's see how far it pulls. Yeah, it definitely pulls pretty far. Yeah, when he stood in the middle of all the training dummies, he uh -huh. hit all of them. Yeah. But yeah, if the, if the core is stiffness only in PvE, then yeah, it's definitely not worth it for PvP. The core... Wait. Well, the core itself is stiffness... Uh, no, no, the, it says PvP only. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, that might be similar to, like, Moose the Shelf, then. And not as fast activation from the looks of it, but... Yeah. Pretty large AoE. And it's super armor. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of like Smoke or Moose the Shell, but, or Mewa Oppression, but, except super armor. Smoke is a super armor, but... Kind of similar esque. But you're just dead set on playing dumb Mewa, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm straight fucking running through people right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to I'm starting to really feel uh my gear behind those changes that they did. Yeah. Dude, I, I was gonna say, so with how much of this pre waking kit do you guys think is going to be used? Because obviously the heals are going to be good. The PA will be useful, though. I, I don't know if people will PA right in the middle of a of an engagement. It looks weaker. Yeah, because the so the pre wake and PV or the pre wake and PA is thirty percent instead of fifty. Oh, that's uh, and the weaker. cooldown is longer, so it'll definitely be less. And then less on top strong. of that, it seems to be a, a shorter animation time, right? That I don't know. I don't know if it lasts the same amount, but it still heals you. Yeah. But you might be able to chew through that, basically, is the problem. Like, someone could chew through that, probably. Yeah. They, they definitely can with full gear. But, uh, yeah, it feels more like where Suck Drackled sit in your face and heal. This class will yeah, disengage just like, and heal, I think. Yeah, you guys don't have a grab. Enjoy hitting me. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You just laugh in your face. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, the pre-waking kit feels so clunky compared to the waking kit now. Dude, this class I mean, is cool. It looks clunky. I mean, the long-ass swings that it has. The problem is, those long-ass swings end up with a one-to-three kill <laughs> potential. Yeah. Just like straight up freaking dumpster kids with those long ass swings. It's so insane. It doesn't transform into a dragon fully. Does that bother you? Should the stance shift have been like one of the stances you always have your wings out and the other one there's no wings? I think what they did was actually, in my opinion, the perfect amount. Like, you know, it'd be silly. It would be if you just had like dragon wings constantly <laughs> all the way around. Like, it, then we start getting into like some weird realm of what classes are going to start looking like in the future. I don't know if I'd want to see that. Like, them making it so that it's an ability is fine. You know? Yeah. I, I just, I personally don't want to see characters literally basically being like, fucking weird creatures did the new the skin on the pre-awakened sword in this new awaken outfit is so cool looking it reminds me of like the diablo crystal sword yeah like visually it looks so cool yeah i i want to i'm so god i want to see so badly how this class fights other classes did you guys uh, sign up for the tournament? And if not, why not? You only need a trial Drac. Drac be Drac, you can win pearls. I didn't know there was a tournament, actually. Yeah, they announced a Drac-only tournament on trial uh -huh. characters. Is it Awaken only? So, or is it let me, and so, so That's the problem. So, it's both. Yeah, so hold on. Let me get this straight. So you want me mm -hmm. to participate in a tournament Yep. Where my options are play busted ass succession Draconia, which is boring as shit and I don't want to play, 
or play the really fun and cool Awakening Draconia uh, three days after I managed to get my hands on it. Those are my options. That That is the thing that is bullshit. The tournament got announced. The tournament's happening next weekend, and the majority of people participating will have only had the class for three days, whereas all the people with early access had it for seven. It's very, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, like Armin said earlier, it's not a well thought out tournament. They should have announced oh. it like a week after Drac was out. Yeah, to give people more time to dork around with it. Because, I mean, what are you going to see? You're going to see one or two individuals that actually really have a good grasp of how to play the kit. The rest are going to be flailing around like <laughs> the new season characters. Not understanding what to do because they haven't had much time on it, and a lot of players, um, you know, a lot of players they they end up waiting for like a few guys to come out to really like sit down and learn a class because they don't want to like have to figure shit out themselves. Mm -hmm. So, Erlobis doing something that wasn't very well thought out. Say it isn't so. The tournament aside, you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, the uh, the class design and everything actually was at least well done, in my opinion. Yeah. We'll see how everything translates to live servers as far as, like, how the damage they deal feels. How, Asha, how do you like the fact that they stack multiple bleeds on you, a la Suck Ninja? It's like pain, right? Yeah, so they have a 50... I haven't seen a class with a pain dot in a long time. It's 50 burn and 50 pain. If they hit you with the fire spear, it'll apply the burn. If they hit you with the other one, it'll apply the pain. So every three seconds. So 100 damage every three seconds if you have both of them on you. Plus an add-on would be another... Either the tier three, so another one fifty or one hundred. I think they're fairly subtle that it's not that big a deal. I don't know. It's pretty cool though. I like it because it's like, oh, actually, a little bit of damage ticking you down, but it's not. It's not insane. Yeah. And it's only for nine seconds, so it'll tick three times. Yeah. Um. How much is it? How much is the damage? It's 50, so there's two of them. They're both 50 every three seconds for nine seconds. That's not bad. Yeah. It just depends on how much... Like, it's not... That's not going to be even in the same fucking world as, like, Suck Ninja, for example, with their dots. No. So, you know, like, honestly, like, dots really haven't played a major role in the current form of PvP in a long time. Like, Suck Ninja is pretty much the only one that I've really noticed that just really stacks you up with dots. Back in the day, I, I thought we used to have a lot more dots, but like, we'd have bleeds and burns and a whole bunch yeah, of shit. Yeah, well, we did everywhere. before they changed the add-ons because they had poison damage and bleed yeah. and pain, so you'd kind of stack them all up and then they consolidated them into one tier three that gives a little bit more damage because some of them were fairly low, but yeah. Yeah, there are definitely a lot more. Because now there's no, like... Isn't Poison one of them or Toxic? Used to be one. I don't even know if a class like has that, that yeah. in their kit at all anymore. Yeah. It's, uh... So I don't, I don't see a problem with it, honestly. It's obliterate skill. is very odd the flow to the shift death thing that changes the animation. I guess you do need it because it adds just way more damage. Uh, dude, I, I hope this class is really good in PvE because I, I need 110 bill and I want that to be a fun grind. 110 you know? bill? What are you going for now? I need, I, a pen, I need a Pentoro spell. Oof. Yeah, it's not going to be easy.
All right, well, do we think we're good on Draconia? Yeah, I guess so. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, I I do want to uh, just really quickly give a uh, rest in peace to uh, to Biceptimus. Uh, that was rough. What, I don't wait, know if you happened? saw. No. Uh, he spent uh, a half a trillion silver enhancing uh, Devo belts trying to get pen. And uh, he got quite a few attempts, but some of that was rough, man. Yeah. Did he get it? Uh, he he did not get it. No. Uh, yikes, dude. Yep, half a it trillion not for the silver. Of heart, that's for sure. Dude, at, so at one point he failed, like legitimately, like I'm not kidding. He failed. So obviously he failed every tet, right? But not right. only was he did he fail every tet. I swear to God, 80 to 90% of them downgraded on him. It was so hard to watch. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. That's Even his so very hard. last in hand, he ran out of belts and his, his belt was a, uh, his belt was a uh, Tet. So he was like, all right, I'm going to go grind out a belt like really quickly just so we can get like one last attempt in. Right. So he goes, he, he goes to fucking crypt. He grinds out another belt and then he hits it, and not only does it fail, it fucking downgrades to try. Just to really rub the salt in the wound at the end of all of it. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I know Vert's been going for the Debbie's. He's going for Neck right now, and he's been having a lot of downgrading as well. I don't know how many attempts he's done thus far, but... 13 yeah, pen rough. attempts, 10 downgrades. Damn! That's what Biceptimus's numbers were? Yeah. Apparently he yeah. filled two 90% prize back to back. He did. He did. I remember that. Oh, he did. He failed no. two. No, wait. I thought it was three. Was it only two? I thought it was three, he actually. Filled... Yeah, someone's saying three. I think it was three. I'm pretty sure, actually. I'm pretty sure it was three prize fails back to back to back at 90% chance of success. Dude, that's why it was rough, dude. I it was rough to watch. So you're saying don't grind up Debo. Avoid that at all costs. I mean, hey, listen, I the mean, guy got not only I, not only is the grind not profitable, you're gonna fail. The guy <laughs> got up to uh I think seventy three hundred viewers on a fucking Saturday morning. Hey, there you go. That's pretty good. That's worth I mean so he, um, he people, failed. In, he failed in one respect, but you know he's game yeah. in another. I mean, he had he had you know he had a like official stream fucking numbers going on. You know, yeah. and people were people were throwing subs and gifting subs like crazy because they felt so bad. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna uh, he's gonna need that money to buy more crons. <laughs> dude, he still has like I think he had like I know he has. Like, He's got he had like two hundred thousand or something like that, and when he ended, yeah. he still had like a hundred and seventy or some crazy number. Yeah, that's rough though. Feels bad. It was it was hard to watch, dude. It really was. Just the fact that it kept downgrading, dude. I felt so bad for him. I'm like, if it fails but doesn't downgrade. Like, at least you just get another shot at it. And he's got a million crons, right? So, like, that's not a problem. But it just kept downgrading on him every fucking time. What's his stack? Uh, I think it was, like, 276 or yeah. something like that, I want to say. I think I remember seeing 270-something. Yeah, that's crazy. That's unfortunate. Was he depressed? Yeah. Did he seem sad? Uh, I don't know. He, he, he comes and goes, right? Obviously, he was always very excited for the, the taps. And he's he's the type of person like me where I think at one point in the stream, he said something along the lines of like, you know how some people just seem consistently lucky? I'm consistently unlucky. Yeah. I, I think that might have been right after the two or three pry fails. He said something along those lines. So I think yeah. he's he's kind of used to it. I mean, as someone, who, as someone else who is very numb to the pain of enhancing, I definitely feel that. But it's still got to be just like, fuck, man. How many months of grinding is that, you know? Well, now he gets to go for another million trash at Crips. <laughs> yeah, right? That was the thing. 
<laughs> oh no, feels bad. Because I think he said that that was like I forget how much. Someone in chat can probably say, but I think it was like six or eight months or something like that of grinding. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said too. It was roughly half a year. Uh, man, I can't. I can't fathom grinding there that long, getting as many potential attempts as possible built up and then end up with that outcome. That's rough. Yeah. So that's rip. That's why I buy. (laughs) I don't think Debo is going to be, I don't think Debo is going to be one of those items for me. (laughs) Yeah. That's why I uh, I have a high chance of going insane after those kinds of attempts. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm getting a Pentaros belt and I have the Pen Revive Lunar Neck, so I could tell myself that the accuracy is more necessary, so it's best in slot. <laughs> yeah, there you go, exactly. Because that that's what I'm afraid of, dude. It's like what well, he just went through, I can't. I actually couldn't. That shit would make me so sad. Yeah. I that's yeah. I don't know. Put six to eight months of work just gone in the blink of an eye and, and nothing to show for it. That's like, yeah, I think I'm done territory for me, honestly. I, I couldn't handle it. Doesn't Crips he's actually a strong, pull in He's better... a stronger man than I. Doesn't Crips actually pull in better money than Ash Force, too? Yeah, so but both of them rely are... on the enhancing the for drops. the money to actually be good, yeah. Because you, you enhance yeah. and then sell for profit, ideally. Yeah, but I do think it's better raw money. I think, at least I've heard it is, than gotcha. Ash Forest. Yeah, rough. Trying well, to break into that. Uh, on, uh, hopefully, he gets it on the next one in another eight months. That's that's the uh, the mental price that you have to pay in order to hit that seven forty gear score mark. You know. Fucking yeah. wild, bro. All right, we good for comments then? Yeah, we are good for comments. We only have one set this time, right? Yeah, only one set. Do you oh. want me to read them or do you want to read them? Uh, my voice is fucked. I have like... My sinuses are weird, man. I don't know what's going on. Well, I mean, you did travel recently, so... And no, uh, I usually Makes don't sense. have allergies, but apparently I'm not prepared for the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. It's like my my wife, she's like, we can never go camping because her sinuses will literally kill her, probably. Yeah, we have a couple we got to delete, Rez. Do we? Oh, you yeah. just report them and they'll disappear. Let's I, see. I reported some earlier. What, new singles in your area? Delete. Yeah, basically. Yeah, except for it's in German for some reason. Yeah, new singles in in an area, not mine. (laughs) In a area. (laughs) Thank you, that's very helpful. All right. Here we go. There's an assassin comment in here. I'm excited. Nayashi. There is. Nayashi has to. I'm not allowed to. Speaking of assassin, me and him had a. Kind of like a little competition going. I was uh, gone for seven months, and he caught up and passed me in gear. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I to encourage both of us to grind pretty heavily. I was like, "All right, the first one to seven hundred gear score wins," you know. Okay. And uh, he hit seven o or seven o two last night. He beat me to it. Oh no! What do you still need? Uh, I need to finish. I need like fourteen bill to finish off my C twenty, and then hitting uh, <laughs> literally getting one gear score from literally anything. But um, my next gain is gonna be probably just going straight for the try Labresco or Fallen God. So it's probably gonna be a lot more expensive, depending on my RNG. So he beat me to it barely. He he's like. I'm like five days basically away from it being a 699 gear score, so it's pretty close. Yeah. All right, Rose. I haven't pulled up. I'm ready. All righty. Greed says first, let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. Uh, OO Rapid OO says second, let's chill a bit. Wait, Michael Stye. I, I see hands in chat. Maybe one day he could be on this podcast if he can wake up. 
Oh man! Maybe you can wake up in time. Yeah, maybe we just gotta start way, way later. The, you know, <laughs> pans and tournaments, or you know, any sort of uh, <laughs> commitment for that matter. It better be well in the evening. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Continue, Russ. Michael Stice says a third nerd. Chris Loden says fourth. Lil Pork Chop says the awakening seems good. I'm just a bit concerned about PVE. The movement of the class seems fine in Hex and Dragon Blood, a uh, Dragon Blood mode rather. I sincerely hope we don't need pre awaken and just press C to swap between Dual Spear and Dragon Knight mode. That this is the most excited I've been for a reveal in a while. Can't wait to play with my Mega Man Dragon Cannon. Also, sick gains or res, you love to see it. Oh yeah, the try. Yeah, that try. I forgot about that. That try was fucking hype, man. I can't believe you tapped that so easily. Can't believe you went for another one, and wasted all his crowns. Oh, well, that, I mean, <laughs> what else, what other choice does he have? Uh, no I stack. mean, yeah. Uh, what else am I gonna use him on? Shit. So, little pork chop, you, uh, it. You, it does seem like you don't need that much pre-awakening, but I'm sure people will still use the heals and the PA, and then all the movement seems to just flow into the awakening pretty well. And you don't swap with C. That still takes you to pre-awakening, but it does have its own swap. Shift E to hard swap, and then space bar during skills to fast swap between the two stances. Which I, I, I don't know. I still don't love... Space bar feels nice as an input, but because it conflicts with jump, it's annoying. I I really hope one day they listen to player feedback on that and allow you to disconnect jump from space and put it as another option. Yeah. They, they really need to. Uh, Moonman93 says, Of course the fucking May is going to complain about a dash. Jesus. Also <laughs> like how Nayashi made a joke about Rez being on his back and then got annoyed when you guys said something back to mess with him. Lol. Wait, what? I don't no. remember that. Yeah, no, Ashley remember. does all the bullying, and you're not allowed to bully him. That's that's yeah, the rules. That is wait, 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 wait. Nayashi Hold on. The way is that constantly went, bullying on this show, the dude. The way it's that conversation ridiculous. went was both of them said some shit, and that's or uh, Reslar was saying something. That's why I made the comment. Reslar was on his back. Look, all I know is you came on me, and I don't swing that way. I had to break it to you, uh, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Nisma. Hold on, hold on. For the for the May complaining about that dash, come on. Like realistically, you know, you're looking at that, and then without seeing the rest of their mobility, you you can't objectively look at that and not be potentially concerned. Especially when you don't see the stamina bar usage or anything like that. You just see it just as it is the movement. There's definitely some potential concerns, especially if you're considering the damage might be potentially as strong as suck. Like. Could you imagine Suck Drake at fucking damage with extra mobility on top of that? It's just, ugh, that would be awful. So yeah, justifiable concerns. So P Popsy in chat saying you can rebind space jump to another button though. Yes, you can, but the problem is... The skills the, match it. The skills also get rebound when you do that. So for example, if I want to use Halo... I'm talking about decoupling. Yeah, he's saying he wants to separate space from the skills requirement. So... You could either move jump itself to a different button, but still let yourself use space for the skills, or vice versa. Like, make it so jump is space, but let me change the space requirement for abilities to a different key. Yeah. The problem is yeah, you can just... rebind jump, but it rebinds all of your skills that use space as well to that skill. Which uh, means you have to relearn all those key binds, which would be hella fucking annoying. Yeah. And the goal is to separate the two, not, not just to rebind it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Serenisma says, mm, okay. So that's, uh, uh, yes. Uh, Neo Crush says, not 100% <laughs> sure, but thought I saw a few skills with two wings and a few with only one wing out, but maybe one wing versus two wings depends on the stance you were in. Also, I was in the same boat as both Frosty and Rez. I did not like Suck Drac at first, kept coming back to it for a few weeks, and at some point fell in love with it. I disagree with it feeling like Guardian. When you are not comfortable with the kit, absolutely feel slow like Guardian, but once you do get used to the kit, it is not slow. I do have some skills or it does have some skills that are like epic slow motion bullet time and movie, but then it goes right back to pure speed. Yeah. Well, Dark here's the thing though. I'm not used to the awaken kit at all. Like today, like I said, today's my first day. 
this shit still feels way more smooth to me. Yeah. Uh, with way less knowledge. Like, I actually played Suck Jack for a week or two, and this one is just like after two hours, like, okay, this makes sense. I like how this feels. Yeah. Dark Empire says at six, they can be quiet to wait for a vin- f- to finish a video because of respect and culture. I think that was in reference to when they revealed the video at KR and nobody was cheering and you were like, yeah, yeah I don't know if they were just not excited or what. That, that might be the case, but the problem is there was no cheer after it was over, which there almost always is, even in, in KR. And there, the announcer who was trying to hype it up was having reactions loud on his mic, but no one in the actual audience was. <laughs> So that that was the thing. That sounds embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah, it was like the main guy with the mic was like, "Oh, dang!" And then, but no one in the audience, like, no one responded. Silence in the audience. (laughs) Yeah. So it was kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe it was out of respect, but also maybe they just were like, uh, they should have had a like a on TV shows where they have the the laughing button. They just uh, cue in the laughs. Yeah. (laughs) Just cue in the cheers and. The oohs and ahs. Honestly, from the trailer, the the only part of the trailer that was legit hype was the the spider part. I feel like when it's fighting the spider boss and it spins around with the movement skill. But I feel like their trailer did not do this class justice at all. Yeah, like it is I way can, cooler that. than that trailer shows. I think Guardian was the Guardian trailers were probably more hyped up than the Drake one. Yeah. Uh, Zero says, it's wind and fire, her elements, I mean, based on her lore, my two cents would be that her movement is not as big as people make it seem. You have classes that can travel the same distance with one, maybe two skills, and at same speed, if not faster, for example, Kuno, Ninja, Hash, etc. Her hex blood is probably going to be the faster comboing stance, maybe less protected, less damage, less AoE, but overall faster. Dragon Blood, the slower animations, bigger AoE attacks, heavier, bigger damage. Of course, we can't really know until we play the kit, but yeah, I feel it's going to be really fun. I'm personally happy with what they've done lately with the classes from the moment they released Hashashin. All the classes seem way more unique in my opinion. Do you think that maybe they hired a new team to design classes? Yeah, well, not they rehired an old team, the Shadow Arena team. <laughs> does this, does this, does, does, does Draconia have a unique passive out of curiosity? Yeah, actually, it, no. it's the busted one that should not be a Draconia passive and should be for everyone else. The one where you get to make uh, with dragon scale fossils, you Nibilla. get to make church buffs church when buffs you're out in the field and right click them to turn them on. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's this one: ceaseless malice. You invoke the malice of the dragons vanquished by the tra- uh, traitorous, treacherous tyrant who built her throne upon whatever the fuck. But basically, you take 15 dragon scale fossils and it gives you an item, and you right click the item, and that gives you a full set of church buffs. Which is a weird class passive, but whatever. They're character bound yeah, too, so you, you can't. Know, you know what's... You can't swap them to your other characters. So only Drac gets to pop church buffs from from the road. You know, now that you mentioned the the class passive, where's the rest of the classes passives? The lore passives. Yeah, yeah. like their their specific thing. Like, where's the rest of the classes? Like, they've only done it for. What two classes? Sage and uh, Sage Cor- Corsair is the one where you can. It does the mermaid thing underwater, and she has one percent sailing speed. Oh, true, true. So they did it for Corsair too. Yeah, Sage can open doors. Hash can run fast in the desert. Oh, that's right. And Hash then Drac has fast. this one. I I think that's so it. So what? Yeah, I guess they did. It's four of them. Yeah, four I of them. Thought. Sage, Hash, yeah. Corsair, and Drac. It somehow yeah. So where the fuck Nova. are the rest of the classes' abilities? Their lore abilities. Oh, Guardian might have one too. I think Guardian can't get frostbite if you go to the part of the map in the snow area where no one will ever go anyway because there's nothing there. Really? Yeah, I think they can't get frostbitten. That's good to know. With uh, how much clothes that she doesn't wear, I'm surprised. Dude. <sighs> and Shy has passive yeah, I, anger not... and dismay towards the player. Go ahead, Riz. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not gonna say anything because I'm just gonna get yelled at. About it's what? fine. No, just we like it. Nah, we need the worry. drama. I want you to get. No, yelled it's at. fine. Everybody else seems to like it, so it's fine. Enjoy what, what you enjoy. You are, you, know? are you talking about the the mana drain? 
No, no, no. No, no. I was saying, I think it was probably in reference to what I said. Well, about the, what'd you say? With, with how much clothes she doesn't wear, I'm surprised she doesn't get frostbitten. Oh, yeah. That new outfit is so close to being good, but... Which one? I, armor bikinis. Man, just put on a bikini. Like, what? Why does it have to be an armor bikini? That's such a bizarre, like, design choice. Because you never it, know when you're going to get hit in the badge. Dude, it's so weird to me. Why armor bikinis, man? And why does everyone like it? I don't get it. It's so weird to me. Anyway, uh, apparently everyone yeah. loves that skin. I don't get it. It, it, makes, I actually it looks don't, awful to I me. I don't hate it. I, I don't mind it. It's pretty cool. I don't like the helmet, but everything else I think looks all right. I, again, I... I'm of the type. I'm the type of person that I prefer what the Valk just got. I think that that's way cool. I would love that armor set on any class. The Valk. What did the Valk just get? Look, if you're on live server, go to the market and look at the Valk's newest outfit. I I love that outfit so much. The, the, the Drake. The I'm sorry, not Drake, but the DK outfit. I heard was pretty garbage. Oh yeah, that one. What the Dante? Is this the newest one? I don't know. It's a, literally just a full set of armor with a spiky weapon. Like Definitely through. not this. <laughs> Does anyone know? It's called Cer Cerberus. Cerberus. I think Cerberus. someone's saying. Cerberus. Wait, maybe Cerberus, I could see it here. No, you're not allowed to see Pearl Shop on this. Oh, Asai Cerberi. O S S A. Os Osai Cerber. Oh, okay. I see it. Oh, this is the warrior outfit. Yeah, that's the warrior. Yeah, outfit. yeah, I, yeah. I dude. love that outfit. Yes, give me that. Yes, on female, awesome, please. awesome outfit. If only they could get rid of the stupid fucking heels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll fucking take the heels if I could be fully covered. Man. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Like I would take this outfit with the heels rather than like not ha skimpy outfit and no heels for sure. Any day. Yeah, this is a good outfit. Yeah, hundred percent. This is an awesome outfit. Um, all right. Triconic says, "Lol, all we need on Awakened Drac is SA block with movement enabled. The mobility shown grab fifteen percent evasion passive, so that she can also spec in evasion. Don't get me wrong on Musa in AOS. I think I am just frustrated with certain games where I am completely out of control due to matchmaking. Musa is amazing, and the comment was written when we still had AOS, so I had a lot of time <laughs> to chill and think through. I'm glad Fair maybe I got some buffs, so maybe just maybe Nayashi won't complain slash compare to Musa so much." Oh well, you can forget about that. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, Nashi, why as do you complain? Why as... do you complain slash compare to Musa so much? What's up with that, dude? Frost flower super armor <laughs> win. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> tell, though, tell you know, like it got twenty five percent crit bonus now. That shit's clapping bitches left and right. I just use that <laughs> skill. That's literally all I use now is frost yep. flower. So I just want a super armor now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, but the uh, I don't. Yeah, there's definitely. I mean, when, when you definitely... have when you have a class that's so similar, like Musa is very similar to Mewa as far as like the mobility and whatnot. It's just they always have something over top of us in like in comparison. Like their mobility is still outright better. They have a better disengage tool than us. So yeah, I'm gonna use that class as a benchmark to compare against because it is so similar. Otherwise, I would use a different class as a benchmark if it was similar. You know, like it yeah. just is what it is. Like it's your comp. You know, a a Kuna would do that with Ninja. Like they would compare that with Ninja, or you know, um, uh, Striker versus Mystic. They would compare against each other based on whatever it is that they're, you know, trying to get a point across about. So I don't see the problem with doing that. I... Well, this is due. Stop it. Yeah, it's the same uh, thing with, I mean, with Ninja Kuno, right? <laughs> Ima imagine, imagine the one of the top five classes being upset that they're being compared against. That that's the th okay. So here here it is with the Musa. So I, obviously, Tri Connects. There's you guys are going to run into occasional matchups that are horrendous for you, right? Like if you run into like a Suck Nova and a Drac and a Valk, you're going to be like, God damn it! Even as yeah. good as Musa is, that is annoying to run into. I think the thing that I find weird and that I notice more and more Musas are doing is every time, like, Musa is too good, like, way too good to say the sentence, man, why do they get to have that? I should get yep. that too. Your class yep. is too good to say that sentence. 
Like if a shy yeah. is like, dude, it's crazy that Witch Wiz can support and do damage. I don't get to do that. Okay, I get that. Or if it's like, dude, it's crazy that Suck Ninja gets to do what Suck Kunu does, but they have like way more options, viability, and they don't run out of stamina as fast. Like I, I can understand that. Or if Mayo is like, dude, it's crazy that Chase and Awaken Musa is faster than Chase and Awaken Mayo when it's supposed to be the same skill. I get it, but it's like your kit is so loaded when you're like, oh man, might as well give us buffs if you're going to make it so Drac can move like this. It's like, dude, your kit's too overloaded to say that. Yo. It's like, hey, we, we don't have every single possible good thing in the game, so better give it to us. Yeah. That's all. It's just it's just weird. And, you know, ever since the Mayo bus, I basically was like, all right, I don't care about the rest of the stuff. Just give Sleet Step iframe for God's sakes, and that's it. Like, that's all I ask at this point. Like, I know they're not going to fuck with our, our stamina too much, and, you know, Nor they want to make, they at you this know, point. probably not. Oh, but... and, and suck they should, but you know what I mean. It sucked they really need to, but yeah, that's a different. But yeah, Awakening is a really good spot, in my opinion. It's not everything that the class needs, but you can't get everything you want, you know? Like, it's, you start, you just start sounding greedy at that point. I got a whole bunch of changes to my class that no one honestly probably really asked for, but they're actually pretty good, so I'm going to be happy with them. Just wish we'd still have that on demand iframe, but that's it. That's all I yeah. want. Nyla said this so much. When Musa saw the Mayo buffs, they said Mayo is just better now, which is such BS. Yeah, I know. It's hilarious. They're like, Mayo was just better. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, does Searing Slam or Slash Fiery Crevice not, like, just scream out over tune to you? And every Musa I talk to is like, that skill is not busted at all. I'm like, dude, you are literally so crazy. <laughs> You're so crazy. It's a decent skill. <sighs> a decent skill. All right, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, Danielle Boschetti, sorry if I mispronounced that, says, Thank you, Frosty, for finally proving that doing workout is bad and dangerous for you. <laughs> Stay healthy, boys. True. True. I concur. I, I concur, 100%. Uh, Coco Tasso says, Good ass time tuning in. That little enhancement session was fun. Grats on your gains, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Daz says, Range AoE multi target grab. Let's go. Oh, thank God it's not. Jan oh, God. says, oh, grats res. Thank you. Thank you. Musassin says, I think we might have already hashed, no pun intended, this out in the value pack discord. But reiterate, for those that have no clue why I said what I said in Frosty not giving context. See, Frosty, you're not giving context, right. dude. What the Let's fuck? When reworked Awaken Musa was live on Global Labs, our forward chase covered more distance, move speed was very, very good, and chase benefited from add-ons and speed spells from like Shy and Wizard. PA and some people complained that it was too much or you couldn't catch the class, but wouldn't apply that same logic when non-grab classes couldn't do shit to SA slash forward guard hose like Warrior, but I digress. So here I am, enjoying hitting Pen Voltara, and I spot there's a, a Drac Awakening vid, and I'm like, please no grab parentheses at least for now. And I'm like, this is a cool class, not bad, until I peep the one movement skill that Frosty is in denial about the distance the skill covers, but that's another convo. Remember forward chase I mentioned? Well, the distance covered in one forward chase was nerfed, among other things, and I'm watching <laughs> this Drac video after tapping a pin Voltara, and the first thought that came to mind was, why would you nerf our distance on forward chase and then turn around and give Drac that much distance with one skill. Mm -hmm. TLDR, for those that bitched and moaned about forward chase on Global Labs before it, it ever even got, or, sorry, before it even got to live, Wait, can I, being can OP I, and it I, got nerfed. I have nerfed. to do the TLDR. So okay, I, okay. I'm not going to be able ahead. to read the whole thing. People wanted the, the Musa voice. So I, and you don't know what the Musa voice is, do you, Rez, or have you heard it? No, I I know what the Musa oh, okay. voice is. I just I don't want to bring shame to the the real thing by doing a cheap imitation. <laughs> I would love to hear your version though. All right, <laughs> all right, and my voice is gone, so this is going to be tough. But I'll, I'll do just the TLDR and the Musa voice. All right. <clears throat> okay. Go. Yep. Go ahead. All I right. believe. 
For those that bitched and moaned about 4Chase on G-Labs before it even got to live being OP and it got nerfed. You better open your traps and get that distance nerfed by like half. There it is. That's how Moose's talk. It's just not but, fair. So your your retort, Frosty, is the person who viciously and deliberately left out very important context to Musassin's comment. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I don't remember, and Nayashi, you correct me if I'm wrong, and any other Musa, like Nakani, were people calling for chase nerfs during the reworks? I don't remember that at all. I legitimately do not remember anybody, not just myself, but anybody complaining about the chase nerfs. So the only nerfs that I remember being called for in terms of chase was all of the Mooses crying for chase nerfs when they said they didn't want to be uh, ignoring slows anymore. That's the only nerfs to chase yeah, that was, I recall people crying for. There was the internal turmoil of whether the chase change was actually a nerf or a buff because move speed didn't affect it. So there was that, but like the non-bladers were not complaining about Chase. I, I don't remember seeing them complaining about Chase. So it's very strange that he's like, where, where's the sentence? Let's see. Um, uh, live on G Labs, PA, and some people complained that it was too much, or you couldn't catch the class. Like I, this part never happened. This was only in his mind. This whole part was just. But, and then they say wouldn't apply the same logic to other classes. But this part, I remember people complaining about warrior movement during the reworks for sure. I don't remember people complaining about the Musa ones. That's why it's so strange. It's just like, okay. And I love what, that. Is he, is he that gaslighting better, himself? He says you better open your traps and get that distant nerf by like half. Yeah, people. All you people who complain, you know what's unfortunate for Musasin here in this situation? If, if people were to pay, actually listen and do what he's asking, if only the people that complained about Chase complained about the Drac movement to get nerfed, it'd be very few people. It'd be unfortunate for him, you know? Yeah. All right, that's all. Ready to move on. Dev oh god, I'm gonna fuck this one up. I'm so sorry. Devon Devon Brunson says Grats Res, thank you. Thymus says every time I see a new class release, I want to play the game less and less Lamal. Uh John says PA make Awaken Mystic great again. Smiley face. By the way, Frosty, did your letter reach PA? No. Kuno's PV is still No. I doubt Just it. I don't know. I don't I don't know how I'd ever know. But uh, Josh Mira says at eleven twenty three that dash with iframe looks insane, but look at the actual distance. It looks that is a small dash in distance, but the effect that the skill have make it look way look like it's way bigger. Also, if the distance is small and the flight time is longer, that only means that this iframe speed is slow in comparison to the actual speed you feel in game. Yeah. By the way, this the zoom out thing you can't. It's just part of it. It's literally part of the skill. You can't not zoom out. Which I hate. Which is interesting. It's very strange that it forces your camera to zoom out. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, Dra Drastic Dream says, Dear PA, I want a romantic horse title. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be good. That would be good. Lebo says, I guess your eyes deceived you, Frosty. Have you seen the Awakening Drac going zoom in test server? We'll be saying hello to the enemy backline frequently. Go in kill backline and die. Crying laughing emoji. I, I actually still don't think my eyes deceived me. They, they didn't use the extended version in the trailer. I, I still stand by the trailer version isn't that impressive. The actual version that you could do with the turn is impressive. And that is not what they did in the trailer. Uh, in any mm. of those clips. Which is another reason why I find the trailer so weird. That they didn't show like what it's actually capable, uh, capable of, which would blow people's minds. 
Uh, Sakata Lawrence says, So, anyone remembers when Frosty said that Draconia Dash is not that good, that he can get as far <laughs> with two Kuno skills? Yeah, that was a fucking lie. Just jump from a rock to Calpheon Castle easy. And then he edits and says, I finished watching Drac Awakening Pistanity. Guys, can someone hug me? I'm scared. Yeah, okay, ag again... If you compare just, just this, it literally fucking ten and cutter dance. It's the exact same. If you compare the one they show in the trailer, it's not a lie. Kuno literally can do that movement in just two skills. I promise you. That is the extended version that you see on Pistanity and all the other clips were not in the trailer. They did not put that version in the trailer. So no, my eyes doth not deceive Lebo. Let's be real here. Rossi was paid to talk very positively about the Drake Exactly. See, and that's this is what I'm this is what I'm all about, Nashi. I like it. I like it. No, I agree. <laughs> the paycheck for the paycheck for this month specifically said, Hey, by the way, this next class has got some pretty fucking insane movement. I need you to downplay it. All Wait, right. I, can, need I, you to downplay can I also the shit for the record this do not I I forget the term, but I you're just put it's words in my mouth to say that I said it's not that good. I said that it doesn't surprise me or blow me away because of how other classes can move. That's all I said. I did not say, uh, that dash is not that good. I'm just saying, I don't, I wasn't like, oh my fucking god, look at this movement when I saw it. Which does not mean that it's not good. It just means I'm not blown away. For the yeah, record. that's the paid acting. So if you're, you can call oh, me yeah, out. Everyone is bad. welcome to call me out. Just do it accurately. That's all I ask. Agreed, agreed. And I and I concurred with you as well. Like I they definitely did not show the full extent. And when I did testing based on the version of it that they showed in the trailer, we most classes will move just the same, if not faster. But when they do the full extended, that's when it kind of gets a little gray. Yeah, right let, there. let me let me pull up let me make a trailer in HD with Berg running around the entire mountain while my whole guild chases him and see if people are like, Oh shit, maybe that movement's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Or be like uh, Musa Mayo going in the Tiger Blade and just chase canceling away from an entire guild. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that, that one's the... Oh, that's crazy. That's the duck clip, you know, where it shows Musa and the oh, duck yeah. and goes into the river and just yeah. zips off. Yeah, the one I thought was new. I do think the overall movement, for the record, is very good. It's better than I expected it to be. Like, even the, the way the pre-awakening yeah. movement chains together with everything feels really good. Yeah, it's just how good in an actual... PvP scenario, we'll find out. Uh, and the last comment is from Dex2. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I love the content and I support you guys every chance. Thank you. That said, Res needs to stop whining about grinding rotations. Oh. I'm a primarily PvE archer and there's nothing more satisfying than pulling a full grind zone with full bloom shift E than ending every mob in zone with radiant explosion. That said, I am respectful enough to swap servers to allow hardcore PvPers their space. I don't, what, when, what is this what am I, in response to? It? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I don't. Did you complain about grind spot rotations? I don't know. Did I? I don't remember. What did I complain about grinding? A couple weeks ago, we had a discussion about if, like, orcs was contested when you were at the back rotation, but I don't know. Outside of that, yeah, I, I mean, we talked know. a little bit about karma bombing over the past few weeks, but that wasn't last week. Yeah, I don't know. Not too sure. Yeah, I don't know. Bizarre. But hey, you know what? That's what we're here for, I guess. Uh, and that's it. That's all of them. It's all of the comments. We did so, it. So uh, we did it. We did it, team. We did it, Reddit. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for leaving a comment. Make sure to leave one on this week as well. Uh, we got anything else that uh, we need to do before we get out of here? No. I don't think so. No? No topics? Good to go? Nashi? Nothing? Oh, how are you guys getting obliterated by a bunch of hashes? How is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, no. No, not really. No. I have seen more of them, though. Yeah. I have definitely noticed an uptick in hashes, but I I have not to this point yet decided that they are busted and need to be uh, taken down. Is it? So. Wh which ones are you seeing? 
What do you like? What specs? So, yeah, Sucker Awaken. Uh, honestly, I feel like it's been fairly 50 50. I've probably seen more Awakening, though, than Succession, if I really had to, to say. But I, I think it's been pretty even. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's it for the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure to check out our Twitch streams. You can find them in the description down below. Twitch.tv slash SoFrosty, Twitch.tv slash Nyashi underscore NA, and Twitch.tv slash Not Reslar. Uh, thank you so much again for leaving a comment. We read them every single week, so leave one on this one as well. Let us know your thoughts about Draconia Awakening, and we will see everyone next week. Bye-bye.